degrees. Yeah, Lindenapolis Center, do you have any test operations restricted area 2508? Area 31, Roger. The traffic is quite luminous and is exhibiting some non-ballistic motion, over. Roger, Area 31, continue to send at your discretion, over. Okay, Center. The traffic is approaching head on, all to right, and really moving. They're right by us, right now. There are a thousand UFO sightings reported around the world every month. 90% of these sightings can be explained, but 10% cannot. Officially and unofficially, the U.S. military has been investigating UFOs since 1947. Their top secret goal is to find out what's behind these unexplained sightings. The Pentagon classifies them as unusual airborne anomalies, but a better term is X-Files. Join us now as Mac 11 and Commander Cobra explore these unsolved cases, UFO incidents that baffle even the U.S. military. This is Mac Maloney's Military X-Files. And now, here's Mac Maloney. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Mac Maloney's Military X-Files show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show we have for you tonight. But first, let me introduce the members of the gang. Girls, get ready. Sit yourselves down. Fans, Mr. Big Box of Kleenex, Big Box of Wipes, and a squeegee. Because the very famous Juan Juan is here. Juan. <laughs> hey, Mac, how are you? Squeegee. Hello, girls. Welcome we to the show. We added that last week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. What's going on with you? All right, everything's, everything's cool. Uh, Notice my attire today. Okay, you're not Nikos. You're not Nikos, the Greek fisherman. No. You are. Uh, I'm the uh, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones, uh, Stones. okay. Uh, roadie. Things are back to normal. Yep. Okay. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm pumped up. The Stones are going good, to be good, touring. Good. Schedule's being made. Hopefully, they'll be in mm-hmm. New England someplace. Yeah, I'm happy. Did I hear off air that your wife that your wife caught you watching Lily James movies again? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm watching the the new Lily James show <laughs> on Amazon, and uh, it's not that good. Uh-oh. The the, the storyline isn't riveting Turn at the all. Sound up. It's. I mean, some of the visuals are okay. You know, she gets into a tub a couple yeah, of times, and I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, okay. you know, she looks good, but it's it's not a good script. Okay. Yeah. Just turn the sound down, then. I, I could do that. It's kind of, okay. it's a quirky period piece yes. with a modern, up-tempo background music from popular uh, pop artists. Yeah, that's... Wow, never I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Not really. Three episodes. Uh, listen... Let's uh, <laughs> go ahead. Finish your thought. Go ahead. It's not. It's not uh, cute, Lily James in yesterday, and it's not the uh, the oh. deep the deep Lily James in uh, the Guernsey uh, potato peel pie uh, okay. book club World War Two period piece. Oh. Yeah. Am I glad I asked? And it's this it's not Lady okay. Rose in Downton Abbey. <laughs> <laughs> why don't we go? Sorry, those, those words again. I'm bummed. Why don't we go the, uh, here now? Yeah, no. Why don't we go up the uh, totem pole? And uh, this is the moment you've been waiting for, Milfs, Gilfs, and Gigi Gilfs, because <laughs> very famous Coco is back. Commander Cobra. You know what? Coco. Mrs. Cobra caught me watching. What? Yeah. Battle of Britain and the Blue Max double feature. That's oh. what caught me watching. How dare you? <laughs> Blue Max is a great movie. Oh, it's a great World War One movie. It's, yeah. it's, it's actually really, uh, and the uh, the book that it's uh, based on is uh, equally outstanding. Yeah. yeah, is that George Papad? Is he in that? Yes, George, George Papad, and he he plays that. He should have got the Academy Award for that role because mm. he really captured what it was to be a commoner amongst the uh, the more elite stratus of society that was the officer corps. Iron Flames, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of funny because back then, the people, you know, traditionally who would be the knights and the landed gentry became officers, became pilots. You know what I mean? So the yep. the knights kind of came knights of the year, really, because the people up there flying around were, you know, kind of like the officer corps, the, the uh, people who were in the highest strata of society, and then the people taking care of the but planes sadly, and doing the sadly, the higher strata of society didn't necessarily make you uh, a better pilot. No. So when they, and both again in World War II, they had to start uh, uh, making it available to more common folk. The common that folk, could actually, yeah. That could actually pull off the uh, the requirements. Okay. They're very interesting. And it happened on both sides of the line there uh, mm-hmm. in both wars. And then somehow they came to you. So 
Yes. Well, <laughs> I am of a different throwback species altogether. Uh -oh. uh, you know that uh, they only break me out of the glass case in case of emergency. Emergency. <laughs> Good. Okay. That will remember. Okay. Going sideways on the totem pole up there in um, Battle Creek, Michigan, the Battle Creek of the Republic, the national correspondent, Switchblade Steve Ward. Switchy. Hey, great to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, okay, we're going to do this now again. All right, he's wearing a he, There's a wig thing going on. You know, regular listeners will know. And this looks like um, Andy Warhol. I don't know. Andy Warhol. Yeah, he does look like you. Andy Warhol. That's Andy it. Warhol. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> that, that's really scary stuff. Well, the other reason for this, so the other blame you know, for this. Well, Last because I, I, the, uh, I speak the truth, and now he's oh, offended. Okay. And, uh, Don't <laughs> I had the Fabio thing going last time. Fabio the shirt. Yeah, I lost the the paperback contract. Oh, you did. They said I, I was too buff. They didn't have the CGI to tone down my physique. Too so buff. I uh, I lost. You got thing. too big for the covers. That's the problem. Go. The there covers go. got too small for you. Right. Right. Are you. Are you wearing pasties with that too? <laughs> oh. oh. Those and pasties are the Mac Maloney Military X Files oh. pasties. So yeah, let's just calm it on down them. there a couple <laughs> notches. They're available. <laughs> online at the store. At our store, our online store, right. Okay, Switch. Uh, Switch is continued uh, to be off the deep end. This is my next uh, piece of art. Uh, oh, so, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He did we, tomato cans, did you're going to do Pepsi. But now we're doing Pepsi. Excellent. Okay. Uh, again, moving sideways on the totem pole, our security chief, Willie Club, is with us. Willie, how are you doing? You know, I'm doing great, Mac. Hi, gang. How you doing? Hey, Club. What's happening, man? Okay. Well, it's kind of starting off slow here tonight, but I'm sure we're going to pick up pace. Slow. Okay. All right. Well, that's switching his wig. Did that. We can blame him. Okay. You're wearing your... You always... Tell when Club gets that early bird special dinner before he shows up to do the show because he is just like oh, working, wow. ready to go. Oh yeah, he's wow. a little sassy sometimes. I am. Oh, I'm, I'll tell you, I'm ready to go. He had the okay. turkey dinner with gravy, mashed potatoes, corn. Uh, yeah. I, had, I had clam chowder. Ah, all right. Yes, man. Clam Extra chowder. clams. <laughs> okay, let's go to the Beauty Among the Beasts. Up there in upstate New York, our favorite good witch, Raven, is with us. Raven, how are you tonight, Raven? Hi, my friends. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You betcha, Raven. Got a Looking lot of good reaction tonight. to your new haircut. Yep. Yeah. You got the bun going, but you also got everything else going. I got to have a bun. I'm uh, ramping up for, for winter hat season. So really? that's just around the corner because then I don't have to worry about doing my hair. It's the best time of the year. Huh. Just put a hat okay. on. There's a little secret. I wish I had thought of that before I do my hair every morning. Uh, so how are things with you? Everything okay? Everything's good. I'm I'm uh, talking a little weird still after I had that uh, procedure done, so I'm sorry. And I'm a little loopy on the meds, cool. so uh, we might be in for something. She had oral surgery the other day. Oral surgery. Mm -hmm. Did you have a tooth removed or what? Yeah, had three of them removed. Oh, man. Wow, really? Three at once? Were these, yeah. were these uh, wisdom teeth or was yeah, it? Yeah, oh, they were my, my last wisdom teeth I had, and they put me on the, the, the thing, little. Yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah I did that, and uh, that was fun. Oh, and I, I, I talked up the show to my dentist. You know? <laughs> I had no idea what I was talking about. <laughs> so you were awake. You were awake on the uh, during the procedure. Yes. With the gas. Was this yeah. like a sodium pentothal uh, type uh, thing, or do you were on the laughing gas? Laughing gas. Yeah. And then the, ah, the yes. Novocaine. Well, yeah. And I, know. I still feel like I'm like a little uh, slurring things. So okay. I apologize. Well, yeah, I you look a little know. puffy. You look yeah, I can, just gonna let I you know <laughs> you are you are doing what the handbook says right now is the best thing if you want to break facial recognition because your face is a little bit swollen uh -huh. and if you smile a lot and you've changed your dental uh, arrangement a little bit so if you need to escape or she move could, around this is the time to do it just smile a lot when the cameras look at you she wants to sneak into up. a nuclear plant she yeah. should this is the time I should go to do get it. a new uh, driver's license photo absolutely while I'm at it. absolutely yeah. Yeah. You know, I went to get my uh, driver's license about a year ago, and they took the picture. And uh, this is in Massachusetts, where it's the most untouchy-feely organization you can imagine. And the woman looked at the picture, and she said, do you want to take another one? <laughs> oh, that was. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. oh. They always ask me that when I really? go. And I have, I've had, what, four licenses now in my life, four new pictures, and they are consistently bad. 
And I'm, I just tell them every time I'm like, just don't even bother. I'm not going to get a good one. And yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. Well, think of, think of what it's like when we get out pictures. Well, Raven, stop changing your name and you can stick with one license for a while. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, okay, so listen, later on tonight, what we're going to be talking about is uh, uh, Switch gave a uh, talk at a Mothman festival, one of our favorite uh, creatures, Mothman. We're going to talk a little bit about flying um, creatures, okay, creatures that seem to have wings but don't use them to flap to to fly, which is very odd. And then later on coming up, we will be talking about strange noises uh, that people hear all around the world. Uh, a lot of them uh, have no uh, rhyme or reason to them. Uh, there was one just uh, recently that we're going to talk about down in Maryland. And then at some point in the show, uh, our good friend Vic the Wop, Vic the Wop is going to be joining us. Uh, Vic, Vic plays Captain Kirk in the uh, YouTube series Star Trek Continues. And what they have done, he'll explain it, I'm sure. But what they did was they basically are the bridge between the end of the TV show and the beginning of the movies. Uh, so he'll be coming up. So um, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a quick break now? And uh, get the, sh the ship on the right course, and then we'll be right back after this. You're listening to Mac Maloney's Military Action Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. Do you know where the world's most secret bases are located? Do you know what spooky action at a distance means? Is there a conspiracy by aliens to prevent us from conquering space? And where is the best place in the United States to see a real UFO? Find the answers to all these questions and more in Mac Maloney's new book, Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe. Visit places you never knew existed. The Phantom Tunnels of Tokyo, the UFO Trail in South America, Hong's Hat, and the very mysterious M Triangle. Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe contains hundreds of reports on ghosts, haunted planes and ships, weird celebrity deaths, mysterious sounds, and a breakdown of every monster in America, state by state. You've heard him talk about it on the radio. Now, get all of Mac's paranormal research in one large volume. Mac Maloney's Haunted Universe, with a forward by the very famous Juan Juan. On sale now in your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. Everyone to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show we have for you tonight! Very quickly, the uh, the gang is here. Very famous Juan Juan is here. Hello, Mac. Happy to be here, as always. Okay. Commander Cobra is here. Commander Cobra. Good evening, all. Okay. Switchy, Switchy is here with his new new mat, <laughs> new rug. Well, he's looking around for. Him. <clears throat> there's, there's, there's some rodents in the house. <laughs> oh, really? There's some rodents there living in it. <laughs> Definitely. Silva fact rodents. Okay. Uh, Switchy's here. Also, uh, our security chief, Willie Club is here. Willie, everything okay with you? You know, Mac, everything's great. I just want to recommend uh, to Switch. You probably want to vacuum that thing because there's something well. in there when you <laughs> had that on your head there. <laughs> there's well, something there, in there. I'm not sure what it is, but there's a family living in there. And I, I yeah, there's a couple of like, tails you know, sticking out. It, it's be obvious. Of them. Okay. <laughs> um, it might be also, old. The, the somehow putting up with all this is our good friend Raven. Raven, how are you? Hello, my friends. I'm doing Great. well. Uh, you had some oral surgery uh, the other day. Did they give you any painkillers or just told you to take Tylenol? They gave me painkillers, but I don't like them. They make me feel all weird, so I don't really uh -huh. take them. So. Okay. Why don't you send them to uh, Mac? He'll take care of them. I'll send them your extra, way. Well, well, spread, spread the wealth, Mac. Come on. <laughs> okay. We may need a painkiller after this. <clears throat> so anyway, so um, why don't we get to this right away? Um, Switchy. We've been, uh, I was listening to past shows and uh, some of your past breakfasts have been just top of the pops, as they say. Though, if it was on a chat, we had two uh, beefsteak uh, breakfasts and then you hit us with an energy bar and some yogurt. We're going to, you know, call that an anomaly. Um, I think you had a uh, large breakfast last week, more beefsteak, astronauts break, breakfast, steak and eggs. So, switch. 
What did you have for breakfast this morning? Well, I went to Denny's Diner. Yes. And it's going to be good. We love Denny's. I had the, the ultimate omelet. Minus mushrooms. No mushrooms, so switch. No it. mushrooms. With okay. hash browns, tall glass of orange juice, black coffee, toast, and uh, a little bit of grape jelly. He put some grape hey. jelly on it. Yeah. Okay. On a couple, couple slices. Now, I cut the uh, cut the uh, uh, omelet in half. Yes. And the hash browns in half. Actually, a, a little, I had a little more than half this morning. Go but ahead. I saved, saved part of it for later for like an early dinner tonight. So I had two meals out of it. Cool. That's what Denny's all about. That's okay. Nice. How much did it cost? Uh, about uh, sixteen with my military discount. Okay, sixteen. And who waited on you? Do we know it her was, name? Uh, uh, Vanessa. Okay. And what did you leave for a tip? Get ready, folks. <laughs> ten. Yes. A oh, ten. Wow. Well. Yes. Yeah. Vanessa deserves it. Whoa. Hi, there Vanessa. He <laughs> continues to very good there. Okay. All right. Did she meet you outside afterwards? Wait a minute. Stop it. <laughs> so. When you, when you tip like that, yeah, and you're a member of the crew here, that's called you a need bid. To put MMMXF, yes, right on the bottom of that receipt. Right. Uh, one one will never do that, of course, because of obvious previously stated uh, religious requirements that do not exactly. allow him to tip. <laughs> is that why? <laughs> why do you do that? Are you looking for like a tax write off or something for the uh, show? Absolutely, of course. Uh, so okay, I tip, switch hey, look, good. I tip handsomely. Right. I'll tell you that. I walk into. Oh yeah, you tip handsome. Your idea of a handsome tip is they get to look at you while you walk out. Well, that's 100%. that's part of it. That's worth something. Look, we've been out with you, bro. We understand <laughs> what's going on here. Okay. I mean, they can't resist when you, when my you dimples. When you roll back in, and, to, and then people are like, "Oh, you're with that guy. Got it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Great to have you here. Oh, you want a beer?" Why don't you know, go to Germany? You I, know, get that kind of thing. I kid you not, but I walk into that great restaurant that I go to, Farmer's Kitchen, and the one of the girls or any one of the girls will point to what table they're working or if they're working uh, which half of the counter. And they insist that I That's, sit so that they can wait on me, that individual. They insist you sit there? Yeah. yeah I, then I, they have a fight who doesn't have to go over and do the service. Oh, and I write a love note on every bill. I tip 50%. I write a love note on every bill, how wonderful they were. And they take a picture of the receipt and put it on their phone. I kid you not. <laughs> I'm not kidding about this. <laughs> okay. And I know when, when, I, when I'm when i there at the Farmer's the Kitchen. Card? What? Is that a way to check your credit card? They're taking pictures of the bill? Uh, no. Well, no, they take a picture of what I wrote on their bill. On their on their version, oh, I see. on the merchant copy, yeah. This is going to be a sexual harassment thing. I can just so the tell. boss gets I to read them and coming down the road. You know, the boss gets to read them, and uh, the girls get to be proud uh -huh. of what the a customer has said about their service and about the food. Wow! I even write a little note yes, in the bottom so the food does, and yeah. thank the kitchen staff for a great meal and clean dishes. Food. And they uh, and when I'm there at Farmer's well, Kitchen after dark, they talk about. All the yes. all the love notes they've gotten from me. Hardly anybody else does that. I mean, once in a while, somebody will say, "Yeah, I read I read a little, you know, thank you on the top of the receipt." I do it all the time. I write yeah. like a wow. ten page tome on the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the front I know, and it sounds like you're reading it to us right now. Yeah, we, yeah right. Why don't we do a collection yeah. and put a book out? I have an arrow so pointing look, to the back that side. That sound of you it. just heard. They love it. That sound it's you gonna just be an heard. arrow. It's going to be in the back side or something. <laughs> wow! Come on, let's go. <laughs> that sound you just heard, as it turns out, uh, we've talked about this before on the show. Um, over the years, people have heard odd sounds, okay? Just sounds from the sky, sounds from, they sound like they're in the distance or close, closer to them. I know it happens a lot in Taos, New Mexico. It happens a lot in Bristol, England. It happens a lot in Tokyo. And and one of the sounds is um, is a number book. Now these are sounds that people hear, you know, from from want of you know better explanation from the sky. It sounds like it's, it's coming from the sky. There are unusual sounds that people that they hear under the ocean, and the U.S. Navy has this uh, network on the ocean floor around the world. It's basically a network of microphones that can pick up just about anything, and they're there uh, to track Russian submarines. 
Correct. Is that right, Cobra? Right? Isn't that yes, the that's the yes. uh, Sosa one. Sosa Sonar, right. yep. And there's also some of it in the Pacific. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so they started picking up these odd sounds, and, and you know, one of them was called the Whoop, and you can listen to them on, on YouTube. And, and what most people think, most of them are, are like when um, icebergs either break off or they start scraping the bottom of the ocean and they make these weird sounds, okay? They're very eerie, but... We're talking about something else here. These are sounds that people hear like, you know, every day. They sound like they've come from the sky or off in the distance. Frequently, they're near large bodies of water. Um, And um, every once in a while, you'll see a new news story about, you know, people hearing these weird noises and no one can can figure out what they are. Some of them sound like sonic booms. Um, Some of them sound like droning machinery. Now, we're going back like two or three hundred years, okay, hearing this stuff. So hearing droning machinery three hundred years ago in uh, you know, Bristol, England, you know, who knows what that might have been. Anyway, so um Raven and I exchanged a, a news story today. And this is this is the latest one. Uh just was in the news, I think, uh yesterday. Raven, you got that story in front of you? Yeah. Um so I have it pulled up. Um so we're in Suitland, Suitland, Maryland. Um, and residents there are up um, being awoken all hours of the night. And this has been going on and off for, for several years um, due to a disturbing siren-like noise. Um, and people describe it as being a mixture of um, a tornado uh, siren mixed with um, the sound of a, a spaceship like lifting off. Um, also mixed with the alarm from um, the Purge movies, um, and that's a really creepy um, what movies? siren. The Purge. Oh, okay, yeah, sure, yep, very creepy, yep. Yeah, um, I can imagine. I, I did watch a couple um, YouTube videos about what they're describing because somebody did catch it on uh, mm-hmm. on camera, and it is very, very chilling. Yep. Um, also, Suitland happens to be uh, it's roughly nine miles southeast of Washington, D.C., and I think it's suspiciously close uh, to the Suitland Federal Center. Mm-hmm. So that might be a correlation. I know that uh, I know that uh, the uh, Office of Naval Intelligence, their headquarters is in Suitland, Maryland. Are we pronouncing that right, Coco? Suitland? Yes. OK, it's basically Washington, D.C. It just happens to be in Maryland. And there's a lot of federal stuff going on there. A lot of federal buildings, uh, federal employees in this kind of enclosure, or whatever. So I, I think it's very odd that the noises would be coming from, you know, a place that the government basically keeps secret. I mean, the the, the headquarters for the ONI, which I think is called the Center for Maritime Intelligence or something. Um, it looks like a big college, but man, you can't get anywhere near that place. That's a very, very heavy duty security place. You know, whether they'd be doing stuff in there that are making noises, you know, who knows? But people have been hearing that noise for a long time. The, the mm-hmm. Taos, the one in, in Mexico, Taos, they call it the Taos hum. And people, not in his, the strange thing is not everyone hears it. Like about 10 to 20 percent of the people can hear this thing constantly. Some of them have moved. Some of them have gone to doctors to, you know, try to get some kind of help. Um, there's That's one weird. guy who put himself, you know, at night he couldn't sleep. So he would literally put himself in this kind of homemade coffin that he soundproof just so he could go to sleep without hearing this hum. Uh, the Bristol hum is another uh, example. Bristol uh, in in the UK, um, you know, just the same kind of idea. Machine sounds like machinery running in the distance, but like they've taken uh, samples of uh, sound samples of Bristol at like noon on a Sunday when nothing should be happening, and, and you know people still hear it. So yeah. you know what what's going on? Does anyone know, Raven? I mean, as far as I can see, nothing has been confirmed. They're keeping everything pretty tight-lipped. Um, people are speculating that um, <clears throat> it could be a weather um, alert alerting system, mm-hmm. um, or it also could be um, the result of sonic booms produced by aircraft uh, training over the nearby ocean. But mm-hmm. again, they they nobody will confirm or deny anything, so it's kind of up in the air. Um, but the videos are, and the fact that it's happening in the middle of the night, you know, it it just kind of adds to that creep factor and it is very chilling. Um, it almost reminds me of, um, what I could imagine, uh, the alarms at Chernobyl would have been like, Mm -hmm. um, but 
instead of in the middle of the day, you're hearing it at night. Right. Um, it's like an it's, air, air raid siren in a way. Yes. Yeah. It, it, but it's, it's just very strange. Like it, it does sound like it's a mixture of a couple things. And right. I don't know who knows, maybe it's some teenager that thinks it's funny and is putting this show on. <laughs> Cobra, do you have a question? Yes. Well, just a, a quick couple points. Um, the, uh, the stuff around DC has always been attributed to heavy underground activity uh, that no one will fess up to. And, and, there's lots of theories of uh, continuum of operations, crisis centers that uh, the government and those that are in the government can, can get to in a time of emergency and uh, continued underground uh, work. And that has been talked about quite a bit along the East Coast. Uh, the sonic boom part is interesting because of the way some of the travels. I also wanted to note that a while back we spoke about the secret airport near Mac that had some pretty crazy sounds that were emanating around the uh, swamp areas in the uh, tidal uh, pool areas. That's true. Around his island uh, with the screaming and the, and not even brought the uh, local constituency to investigate and they couldn't find anybody. Right. Uh, So you had some pretty crazy stuff, but this uh, machinery one I've actually suffered from. And recently I'd say in the last year, it's finally gone away after some extended time working out in Nevada. um, I, when I would return would return in the evenings, I would hear uh, what these people refer to, at least I think it's the same kind of sound, of um, like a running motor or a, yes. uh, a heavy uh, electrical uh, driven system like you would have like maybe for a bench grinder or a drill going on. Just mm-hmm. that sound of the motor running. And it would take a long time. In my for- ears. Does that, does that count? Well, you know, I, I thought maybe that's what I was dealing with was just the onset. But this is a, a strange feeling because it's not that I hear it as much as I feel it in my body, like the vibration. And you now when I, I've had this follow me all the way home uh, here in Maine and it uh, comes and goes. And uh, over the last year, I'd say uh, it's it finally has uh, subsided with no explanation if I was maybe just tuned to something. But uh, Mrs. Cobra, other people I was with uh, that were in the same proximity where we were all staying, uh, did not experience it. And it was only when I was in the uh, getting in the mode, getting ready for sleep. You know, I saw a thing on TV about an insect that gets into your ear and then gets into your uh, oh. brain and all that. Oh, and no. it causes things like that. You may want to just have some kind of a scan of your uh, head <laughs> just to be sure it's not. Not something, you know, that needs to be removed. I can tell that Raven's (laughs) going to bomb on that one. I am. If I had to get a a scan and found... Oh, I know. If I got a scan and they found a bug in my head, I'd be like, just take the whole head off. Yeah, You you can maybe just tape an ant farm to your ear. You know, Uh, duct tape, uh, something like that. uh, That's gross. (laughs) Yikes. I I got to say, now that we're talking about this, is is that this is the only... Um, let's say paranormal thing I've ever really um, encountered. And, and here's this, you know, quickly. I lived up in upstate New York for a long time. I lived near Route 87, which is the north way going up to Montreal. And I would hear this noise that sounded like a tractor trailer truck on the highway trying to shift its gears. Okay. Trying to, it's in too low of a gear and sounds like it's trying to get up into another gear. And I started, you know, kind of noticing this, especially in the summer when the windows were open. And I was probably about a half mile away from the highway. And and I would lay there and listen to it. And then 20 minutes later, I would still hear it. And I would think, well, if that was a truck, he'd be halfway to Montreal by now, yet I can still hear it. So what was very odd is um, when I would come home to uh, my family's home here in uh, north of Boston, um, I would hear the same thing. Now, you know, this, the family's house is probably about four or five miles from Route 95. Um, you know, I suppose on a quiet night, you could hear something on the highway. Doesn't seem likely, though. But I heard the exact same thing. Sounded like a tractor trailer truck trying to upshift, trying to get into the next sh- the next gear. And it's not happening. And I just thought, just like Coco said, you know, this, this noise traveled with him from Nevada back up to Maine. This is the kind of the same thing. And I'm thinking, why am I hearing the same noise, you know, basically 300 miles apart? Very strange. And it's strange. And it, when it's at night, it makes it even more creepy, you know? Yep. There's also some situations where uh, in, in Oregon, Washington, it's the mid-70s, there was a wave of uh, strange Bigfoot reports, uh, strange lights, classic UFOs, etc. But they were also, at times, it wasn't steady. 
but at times they were hearing something like a factory noise. And this is out in the middle of nowhere, right, right by a river. Uh, and they would even uh, sm have the, the smells of a factory and could feel the heat sometimes, like you feel in some factories. Wow. So, uh, and even I guess there have been reports on the uh, Skinwalker Ranch of, uh, of uh, people hearing like movement underground or whatever. So right. sometimes you'll get that in these areas where all this phenomena seems to occur. So, so why don't we just get right to the elephant in the room? Coco, you brought it up. I mean, there's been stories for years that the U.S. government, U.S. military, it, you know, has lots of underground bases across the country. I mean, some of them are, are just too outlandish. I remember someone said that there was a underground highway from uh, Area 51 to Las Vegas. And, you know, it's like, well, why would you do that? But, um, and, and, but there are definitely, I mean, you know, as we were talking about before, there are places close to Washington in mountains and so on that if there was a nuclear attack, you know, the uh, the government would go there, try to continue on from being in this kind of safe haven in this middle of this mountain. I know one of them was called Weather Mountain, but I think that one has been retired and now uh, they go someplace else. But Cobra, I mean, why would they build, I'm, I'm going to ask an obvious question, why would they build underground stuff other than to go there during a nuclear war? Are there any other reasons you would build a base underground? Well, you know, I just want to make a quick mention that uh, John Lear, who I've uh, become friendly with over the years because of UMAC, he is the one who has talked extensively about a rail system that runs from the uh, Nellis, Las Vegas area up to the Area 51 or parts of that complex. Um, and the reason is obviously from the from the attack uh, standpoint. Obviously, you have a great possibility of protection if you're far enough below the surface yep. uh, from an, an attack. The next part is it's great camouflage uh, where you can uh, keep things hidden uh, and not easily seen, not seen by aerial uh, surveillance of any kind. Um, so that is is handy. Also, if things go wrong, uh, it's uh, it keeps things. Uh, closed in a closed system so if you have something that goes uh, you know horribly wrong you can close it off and and it's underground and it doesn't uh, harm anybody else and it's also a story that comes out with it um, right. i think this goes back to when we were living in caves literally I, I if i think there's a certain amount of protection that goes with it that people are they know that if they have this that it's very hard to attack if you, you can define your point of defense very well on the entrance and it's a it's a handy way to do business. Uh, I just think you have to have the right kind of terrain uh, to, to make that work. And the areas that we refer to this tend to be uh, where you have the two major mountain ranges, the Appalachians and the Rockies. Interesting uh, that uh, that it goes that you're able to uh, to do that kind of tunneling. You don't hear a lot about this out in the uh, in the Midwest, right? Where yeah, you have funny. a we have a plains area that doesn't have. Uh, the same kind of rock uh, composition, you have more of the soil. So yep. uh, no surprise to me on this. Uh, Mary Joyce, a good friend of the show, was on recently on the show. Um, she has had extensive uh, um, experiences in the North Carolina area. And in her case, they found a number of about three foot diameter, nearly perfectly circular tunnel structures around where she now currently lives. Uh, and the soil is very soft there uh, in this particular area where this was, was found. And these tunnel structures seem to connect a, a rather large network of, uh, of, I would say, almost like warrens that were in there. And that tends to link to that uh, little people um, thing, uh, a story that she has researched through the Native Americans that she interviewed over the years that had encounters with these very small little humans that, uh, that lived in this setup. Um, and so from a standpoint of military, it makes perfect sense. You have a lot of control. It gives you a lot of uh, security. Yep. And uh, it's also a great way to spend money. And God knows we love doing that. Right. I don't Russians, say yeah. that. Uh, I, the, we, we know that the Russians have done the same thing. The Germans right. were great at doing uh, the bunker situation. And as I said, if you look back, Gibraltar is a perfect example of, you know, hollowing into the rock. Um, and having a great fortification that is very difficult to uh, to get at. Right. Um, yeah, the Russians have one in a mountain out there where it's like this enormous chamber that they carved out of a mountain, and that's their idea, too. If something happened, their government will go there. But let me ask you this. 
um, real quick. So if you are a um, government agency and you're going to start, you know, clawing out some underground base, you can't eliminate all of the noise. I mean, that, that right. must be taken into consideration when they decide to do one of these things. If people sure. are going to hear stuff, right? Right. And you just, you know, if, if unless you're near a site and if it's really... And that's why I think it lends a lot of credibility to the way these people report the kinds of sounds that they're hearing. If you think about things that are being blasted and um, using detonations to, to crack the rock and, and then start to you know break it up and move it out, that's going to extend for miles. That sound's going to vibrate for miles and miles, especially if you go across any kind of a formation of, uh, of stone. Yeah. You know, and we know that you can vibrate large. Uh, of stonework, you can get them to vibrate and if you harmonize it correctly, you can actually get it to defy gravity or you can fight gravity with it and lift up large pieces. Wow. So if you have power uh, and the power to uh, to do this work and it's deep enough down, um, I think you just have certain sense of people that are going to be more sensitive to it, pay attention to it um, mm -hmm. and, and react to it. I think what's interesting though that happened to you and what I went through and other people I've talked to, because it's kind of hard to bring up a conversation, yes. <laughs> you know, you know, explaining this sound because you have, you know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Club's kind of viewpoint that you've got uh, insects living in your head and you need to go <laughs> have an x-ray. So you get that going on. Um, how do you bring that conversation up? I think you get sensitized to it and it travels with you. And that's the only way I can explain why you could hear it when you return back to, uh, to you know, the greater Boston area. And I was experiencing it, you know, a thousand miles away. That's very strange. And, <clears throat> and plus, it doesn't um, account for the fact that people were hearing, have been hearing these things for two, three hundred years and even right. more, you know. So, yeah, strange sounds now, from... Mac, uh, did yours go away? Did, you, uh, did yeah, yours well, subside? Well, only because I'm not in either one of those locations anymore. But it went on. I, I, I mean, I heard it for, you know, for years, literally yeah. for years, you know. And uh, especially when I lived in upstate New York. And then, you know, when I came home the first time and that it kind of registered that, see, I'm hearing it here. It was really kind of creepy for sure, you know. But, um, yes. Well, you in a wooded way. area up in New York? It's probably one of the reasons, too. There's a well, lot yep, kind of insects and stuff up there that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, can't... I was wondering, Brain um, was there any type of a significance to like where in New York you were living in relation to that road. Yeah, in your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like maybe if there was like, you know, when like there's like a horrific accident or something, like mm -hmm. uh, a piece of that person could attach themselves there. So it oh. could be a type of a, a situation. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, it, it's just it's just very strange. And um, it's strange when it's happening to you, you know? It's strange. Mm -hmm. it's One more point I want to throw into you. Just ask you, you know, without diving too deeply into your... Uh, Brain. your uh, medical history i okay. around the time that this changed i started to go on blood pressure medicine oh hmm. and that made the sound go away uh or it, i shouldn't say it made the sound go away i don't know if it did it's around that time that i noticed that that subsided so i don't know if it was a change in what i have done to myself physiologically because of the uh, the medication i'm on constantly now right to uh, manage the uh, the high blood pressure well and it goes up when uh, dr club it goes up dramatically. I can well, put no, the sleeve I've, on and show you. Well, oh, here well, he goes. Know, let, me, let, me, let me pop a pill before you talk, Dr. No, Cole. but I, here's another thing. I, I also take uh, Lisinopro, which might be what you take. I don't know. but I'm not <laughs> saying on the air what I take. Well, I do because take. I'm not ashamed of it. But, oh, but uh, you know, yeah. high blood pressure causes a lot of things. And one of the things that it does cause is dizziness, um, you can get noises in your ear, so it might not be the. Sometimes insect. when you're talking, I have those kinds of things. Maybe I should be popping up. Well, you sound like my before. wife, but oh, but whoa. needless <laughs> to say, uh, you might have solved it. You brought your blood pressure down. You might you have go. solved the whole problem here. Yeah, and you got to all check out blood pressure. So, all right, the rats look like they're taking over Switch's place. So it's probably a good time to go to a break. Um, strange sounds from nowhere. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't we uh, take a commercial break now, as I said, and we'll be right back after this. So you're listening to Mac Maloney's Mill Track Star Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. Please stay tuned. UFOs are found in Renaissance art, on ancient coins, and etched on cave walls. They're even reported in the Bible. But more surprising is when UFOs are seen the most in times of war. 
Through centuries, thousands of UFO sightings have been made by high-ranking officials, military pilots, and ordinary soldiers. Often, these fantastic appearances occur at the height of great battles. From World War I to D-Day to Korea, Vietnam, and beyond, military investigators are baffled. Why do UFO sightings spike so drastically during wartime? Could it be mistaken aircraft? Or is someone, or something, looking in on us? In UFOs in wartime, what they didn't want you to know, Mac Maloney chronicles centuries of these incredible sightings and tries to solve the puzzle of why so many UFOs are seen while humanity is at war. Read about the scare ships, the ghost planes, and the ghost rockets, alien giants in the jungles of Vietnam, UFOs controlling our ICBM bases, dogfights with flying saucers during the Gulf War, and more. 300 pages of unbelievable stories, along with many startling photographs. That's UFOs in Wartime, What They Didn't Want You to Know, by Mac Maloney. On sale at your local bookstore or on Amazon.com. Everyone to Mac Maloney's new track style show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. What a show we have used tonight. The entire gang is here. Warm one, Cobra, Switch, Club, and Raven. How about that? They get everyone? You got it. Award-winning uh, team here. <laughs> People say that our introductions are too long, but other That's a good introduction. But other people write and say they're the best part of the show. Yeah. So, you know, it's kind of hard to walk that type rope. Anyway. So um we've um Coco and I were talking off air a couple of days ago about different phrases that you hear uh, in everyday life that actually came from the military. And, um, you know, and I thought I knew uh, I thought I knew the origin of some of them, but it turns out I didn't know the origin of any of them. So Coco has um, compiled the list. Let's just see how good we are at this. This is like All military, right. uh, you know, sayings that have come into everyday life. We don't know the origins of them. Is okay. that right there, Coco? That's, uh, I think, a perfect summation. Let me just start this, this segment out. I call this the Roger Wilco over and out uh, segment. <laughs> okay. You never say Roger Wilco. Uh, you hear it in the movies all the time. Completely right. uh, completely boffed up. And over and out is another perfect one. Those are all separate uh, words. Roger uh, meaning affirmative uh, or received. Uh, Wilco meaning will comply. Over meaning that you're done talking on the radio and you want the other person to respond. And out means you're not going to talk anymore. But you hear it always just bastardized, just thrown all together. In, uh, right. Yeah. Words. Okay. So let's start out with with one. Balls to the wall. Balls, balls to the wall. To yeah. the wall. So like you're working hard okay. and uh, going very fast and busting ass, except your yeah. balls to the wall. No let up. No let up. Like, no uh, rest. Like you're going ham. Yeah, you're going ham. Uh, yeah. That is very accurate. The source of that is in aircraft. It primarily came from aircraft, but the control lever on airplanes, especially from the vintage of World War II, had a ball shape on the top of it, or if it was a straight-to-the-wall uh, mounting so that you could grip it. And uh, that's where the expression came. When you wanted to go fast, you pushed that all the way forward. It was up against the wall. You know, that's where that came from. Wow, huh. very hmm. cool. Okay. Yeah, I would I like not it. have known that. Okay, yeah, next. Bite the bullet. Bite, Bite the, the bullet. I know exactly what that means. Let's go. Tell us. I've seen it in, uh, like, battlefield uh, distress scenes like, uh, oh, I don't know, the, Con the Confederate War. Back back when they didn't have a lot of uh, uh, pain-relieving uh, drugs, and you'd be, you were there biting that bullet. Here's a bullet you're biting on it. Hopefully it was a stick, but you had a bullet. And you bid on it and it helped yeah. you from uh, biting your one, tongue. One, you're, you're, you're pretty much, you, you cite the most common example. Uh, obviously, what it means is that to endure discomfort without crying out. Yeah. Um, not having enough uh, to anesthetize uh, troops is where commonly yeah. that, that the bullet morphine. was given for them to bite on. The bullet was mm -hmm. lead, so it was soft enough. Yeah. Or in the case of the Civil War, obviously, it would have been a mini ball because they didn't have literally have the bullet in those days. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, While they were sorry off your leg. But the other real uh, deep source of this is called chewing the bullet, which mm. is what uh, British soldiers would do when they were being uh, whipped uh, for punishment as part of their transgressions. Uh, they would take lashings. So that's where that comes from. Very good. Well, wow. um, no. Can I just interject on that one? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, chewing the bullet. We used to, in the winter, my dog used to chew the bullet. You know, when it, uh, they go out and do their thing and it freezes and then they eat it? Oh. They used to call oh, that chewing the bullet. Holy cow. What's... No way. You made it that dog. <laughs> <laughs> really? You made that up. <laughs> no, it just came into my head. I have, It's been years. Yeah, but, you uh, talk about having maybe a quick <laughs> check to see what bugs are living there. <laughs> Bought a farm. Let's... Bought the, in his Bought the farm. I was just going to say that uh, <clears throat> biting the mini ball doesn't have the same uh, sound as uh, biting the bullet. We all no, know what bought no, the farm is. So basically, what it is, they they when you bite the bullet, they they give you a bullet to bite on because you're in so much pain. Right. right. Yeah. Just gives you something to bear down on to uh, you know to deal with the uh, the pain. Yeah. Right. Bite the bullet. So you got to take the, the farm. Pain. Bought, Bought the, the farm. One of my favorites. You were killed. You were killed. Right. Somebody but what does killed. that mean, though? Where, 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 what's what's the farm that, get to that do means with it? You, uh, uh, with the mortgage insurance you bought off the farm. Yeah, very close. Very good uh, switch. Now, I, I've heard uh, lines about this being extended like to the Korean War. It, it's not. It goes back to World War II specifically because that's when soldiers were able to get a very uh, good uh, life insurance policy and when the word would come home uh, that they were dead they would obviously the the families many of them would pay up this was the uh, coming out of the depression and uh, it was a sizable amount of money and it did allow a number of families to pay off their mm. debt so that they could physically own their land oh. and in the case of uh, bought the farm was a way of saying that uh, what had happened to that soldier or that sailor wow right? very good that's that's tremendous. I'm gonna, here's a, one of my favorites. This great uh, series of uh, movies on YouTube on this one. Fubar, Snafu, and oh, yeah. Carfu. <laughs> Carfu. Anybody want to take a jump? Hmm. Well, well, let's be honest. So everybody understands, you know, in good nature of the show, the F in yeah. all those words is the naughty word. Yeah. Um, the bleep word. Is the naughty bad word. Mm -hmm. So I, I know Fubar and Snafu. I don't yeah. know the other one. Our food, yeah. Uh, that's kind of a you have to really be deep into the uh, into the parts of it. Um, so I don't know any F words. Oh, there you go. Let me help you <laughs> so out. So <laughs> F'd up beyond all recognition, right? Situation oh. normal, all F'd up. Yeah. And then Tarfu, very rare, not heard very much uh, after World War II. Things are really F'd up. Ah, now, like Fubar, Fubar and Snafu made it into the uh, into the civilian kind of lexicon. Here, people talk about it, uh, and often in polite company, the F word turns into foul, up, you know, not to offend uh, listeners. But uh, interesting on this, Snafu was the name of a cartoon character in World War II propaganda and structural movie uh, videos, uh, movies for uh, troops, and Private Snafu and his brothers Tarfu and Fubar were voiced by Mel Blanc of Bugs Bunny uh, and Porky the Pig fame, and that's who did the voices. And they were always getting into trouble and doing things wrong and not following orders, and that's why you had Snap who's things were Fuba. I like it. Snafu was a popular uh, one, I don't know any other one when I was in the military. Got your six. Got your six. Got your six? Is I that never, what I said? never heard Got that one. Or have your six. Got me in that one. I'm surprised, Juan Juan. You nope. know, I we kind of talked about that. No. Anybody? Mac, with your uh, extensive uh, time in writing about uh, tactical aviation. Mac, you, Mac has to dial back in. He'll be back in a second. Switch. Any, anything there? So we'll, Got your six? We'll, we'll, we'll grab up. Make sure you make the note for that one. Well, check your six is the or Check six check is six. A kind of a more popular way. You'll hear it. It's going to pop back again when the... Uh, new uh, installment of Top Gun comes out. If you were to envision a uh, hands clock, 12 o'clock being in front, 6 o'clock is the back, and that is the expression for check your six or I have your six, got your six. Oh, okay. meant that your wingman yep. was protecting you so yeah. that uh, a bad guy couldn't sneak up and uh, take you uh, take you off. You being a 12 and your wingman. Being uh, how about six. no man's land? No man's land. Anybody? Well, that's a World War One reference, right? Like the right? desert you're, or something. You're like in Creek. You're a 
No man's land is yeah. like where you don't yeah. want to be. You're going to be killed on both so, sides. Yeah, it's land that you don't want to be. But where it actually uh, comes from is the trenches of yep. World War One. Yeah. The uh-huh. land that was between the two sets of trench lines was mm-hmm. no man's land because both sides could uh-huh. shoot and, uh, you know, and uh, kill anybody in that. Um, it was kind of like anything goes in that. And, right. And no area. one wanted to be there and no one actually owned that, that land. Um, and no man's land obviously, you know, has that, uh, it just, it, you know, you've gone into like a dangerous area. You're, you're, you're bridging. So no man's land covers a lot of the things that we get into in the sidebar company. So, uh, how about nuclear option? Oh yeah. You hear that all the time in politics yeah. where, um, uh, you're, you're just going to, Go all out and pull, pull the string, pull the string on something, uh, Plug. a big ass decision. You're going to destroy everything. You're going <laughs> yeah. to destroy everything. Right. It, it, obviously, it goes back to the times of mutually assured destruction. Are mad the policy where you know we have them, they have them, and if whoever does it, everybody's going to lose. So that was the uh, you know the theory behind uh, how we kept everything um, in check. Right. But uh, the nuclear option now, of course, means yep, uh, I'm going to go there and I don't care. It's going to destroy everything. So I brought this one up before about Roger that um, anybody want to take a quick uh, grab with the official background on Roger comes from? Mm-hmm. Airplane. Oh, very good. It's very common in airplanes, although it was used in others, but it's it popularized in movies. Roger was the uh, phonetic alphabet. Uh, phonetic alphabet was a way of properly saying things, if you, especially if you had to fill them out uh, or say them out in a carefully in a bad radio environment. So if I was the uh, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, that's ABC. Um, in the early um, phonetic alphabet, Roger stood for R. And R was also a quick way of saying, and Roger became a quick way of saying, uh, received and I understand. So you would hear people say, Roger. Right. Uh, and it was an easy way to, uh, to get it caught up. Of course, that's been replaced now with Romeo. Uh, oh, yes, with yeah. because... <laughs> Romeo, really? Romeo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Romeo's Romeo is now R. It, it is, the, is the R for the standard phonetic alphabet. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, screw the pooch. Last one we'll talk about. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> Yeah, I know what this one means. Go ahead. So everyone knows that it really comes down to to really uh, bungle something pretty bad. You really screw something yes. badly. Um, so for for uh, Raven's benefit, since she doesn't know any of the F words, this is a F the dog kind of situation. Um, it wow. really <laughs> started out with people mm-hmm. saying things like, you're just kind of like lazy and you're loafing around, procrastinating. Uh, you know, you have something you're supposed to be doing and you're not getting it done. And they As, did that with sheep also. Uh oh. They did. Yeah. Well, I don't. took a turn. I, yeah, yeah, I don't, sure yeah. did. Uh, another county heard from, I guess, on yeah. that. Mac, um, is, is this the pet pourri you were talking about in your email? Yes, it must be now. <laughs> yes, now I get it. Now I get it. This ain't gardening to me, that's for sure. So that just means you're screwing everything up. You, re- mm. you did everything that you do possibly wrong and you did it wrong. Yeah, or are you just, you know, you're just doing everything about what you're supposed to do. You're, oh, okay. you're, just, okay. you're just completely, uh, you know, there's another expression uh, that would start with uh, Juliet off. Uh, Juliet, some Juliet. of the letters I-N-G off. Uh, that's similar <laughs> to screw the food. Look at the, okay. look at the nice face place. on Raven. She's like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> What's yeah, that? Um, so you guys, TV show. Listen, okay, hold on. The meds I'm taking and this conversation have my brain just going like in a puddle right now. <laughs> Good. I got one more. She needs some, she needs some more right, Novocaine it's, for this it's one. It's something that we heard all the time in boot camp. Go. Oh. It was nut to butt. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a good one. And tighten up that line. That's a good Sounds one. Like a sex, uh, you say nut to butt? N- nuts to like butt. I didn't say it. They Another, said it. A nicer way to say that is <laughs> belly buttons butt. against certain holes. Yeah, but, oh, that's, but that's not as cool as nuts to butts. <laughs> Fall out the grinder, nuts one? to butts. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, please. I'd like to add, since you brought up a military one from boot camp, I, I can recall from advanced infantry training, we had the acronym WETSU, W-E-T-S-U. W-E-T-S-U, tell no, us. I have no idea what uh, that is. We eat this 
fucked up. Whoa. <laughs> 1850. 1850. I like that one. Okay. All right, listen. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, I'm going to throw one out. It's probably not funny. It's from the corporate world. You know what it means to, someone will say, just hit it with a sneaker. Yeah. What? Did you hear that? No. Well, see, what would no. happen is, like, a lot of times where you'd have to put a presentation together. Some of them would take you six months, and it's yeah. a grand affair, right? right? Some of them just come in and you got to do it in like three days and it's, it doesn't, it's not important or anything. So basically when they say hit it with the sneaker, that means, you know, do your minimum, do the minimum dog and pony show type thing. You know, do the minimum. Okay. No one cares anyway. Hit it with a sneaker. Okay. Oh, I get it. There you go. I mean, that may, uh, that may, let's go back to nuts to box. Hit, hit the street again. Hit yeah. The <laughs> may hit the street. Hey, hey Matt, one, one quick thing I want to throw in here. Yes. If I, if you don't mind, not at all. Um, does the name Matthias Rust, a German, mean anything to anybody here in the room? Yeah, the Rust, yes. I've heard the name before. I'm not sure why. No, Rust is an interesting name. Well, Matthias uh, is a German citizen. And when he was uh, 17, 18 years old, he flew a Cessna 172 uh, from an aero club all over northern Europe, all the way out to some of the islands, and then flew it to Moscow. And yeah, landed that's in the yes. Red Square. Yeah, I remember that. Only had 40 hours of flight time. He spent four years in a uh, labor camp uh, for his punishment. Did he really? Yes. What, what, what uh, year was that? Uh, that was, uh, oh, God, that had to be 1980. Sometime in the 80s. Or 85, because I was in Germany when it occurred. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically the, what this guy did is he flew his, like, Piper Cub type airplane in, in, into Russia and landed it in Red Square. Where there's always like a thousands and thousands of people walking around. I didn't. I thought they released him. He did four years in a labor camp for that. Yes, he did. Um, interesting. They couldn't uh, take case. a joke it was over 28 there. Twenty eight May eighty seven. Twenty eight May on eighty seven. He flew from Helsinki, Finland, to Moscow. Uh, obviously, quite a few uh, of the generals uh, that were involved the uh, lost their jobs. Yeah, he was intercepted two different times by uh, different Russian uh, interceptors who were convinced that he was um, probably where he was supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, and funny. he was just, uh, and he was a, uh, you know, a, uh, an authorized Russian flying. He flew into a major uh, training area where airplanes like his, like the 172, were flying. And then he uh, rolled up on the uh, square. Uh, it took him an hour to show up to get to him. There were uh, Russians coming up to him, taking pictures and getting autographs, touching him, touching the airplane. Wow. And then the uh, army showed up and they were more interested in getting the people away from him because they didn't know what to do with him. Right. And they put a barricade around him. And then the uh, the guys in the uh, long black coat showed up and took him off. Right hey, I, I got to I got to say that, you know, why are you spending a trillion dollars a year on the defense budget? If you want to nuke these people, fly it in on a pipe of cup. It there sounds like make it look like recreational. Flight. Stop you. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Uh, listen, so why don't we do this? <laughs> I think it's time for our, a commercial break now. And uh, when we come back, there'll be more fun. And games and prizes okay. and more wigs. So I'm switching. All right. Oh, the smoking so, lamp is lit. You're listening to Mac Maloney's. Okay. The smoking lamp is definitely lit. Um, you're listening to Mac Maloney's Mule Tracks, our show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back after this. I was in the hospital with my son for 18 months. When he got injured, I wasn't prepared, but I knew I had to be strong. When I was told about John's injury, I was in complete shock. I just remember rushing into his room and giving him a big hug and letting him know I was there. These veterans and families are just a few of the heroes we serve at Homes for Our Troops. For thousands of severely injured veterans, everyday life is filled with barriers. It was really the, the little things throughout the house. Counters that you can't roll up to. I had to drag my wheelchair down steps. I want to help, but he is so determined. At Homes for Our Troops, we build specially adapted custom homes with features like wheelchair access, roll-in showers, and automatic door openers that allow them to function independently and focus on their recovery and family. This house is freedom. It's hope. It's a new beginning. This house has given me my family back. To learn more, visit hfotusa.org.
Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show we have for you tonight. Very quickly, let's go around the horn, as they say in baseball. Uh, very famous Juan Juan is here. Yoza, I'm here. Yoza? Okay. <laughs> uh, Milfs Gilson, Gigi Gilfs, Commander Cobra is here. You've been waiting. On the wing, Mac. Glad to on be here. On the wing. The chicken wing. Uh, up there in um, Battle Creek, Michigan, our national correspondent, Switchblade Steve Ward. Uh, great to be here, Mike. Okay, and you have a uh, you had a big omelet today for breakfast. Was that the angle? That's that's absolutely right. The ultimate omelet, okay. minus the mushrooms. You know, no mushrooms. Why you didn't want to be tripping all day? Uh, no, I I, I don't uh, I don't do any type of mushrooms for any reason. <laughs> sure. Okay. Uh, also, our security chief is here. Talk about mushrooms, Willie Club. You know, Mac, this uh, what a show tonight. Yes. I, just picking up so much tonight, it's unbelievable. I Take know. your notes, right? Yeah. It's everything from bugs in your ear to uh, you hearing strange yeah. sounds at night, right? Military yep, expressions. Okay. Hey, listen, uh, the beauty among the beasts is here with us, sticking here with us, even though she's drugged up. Uh, <laughs> favorite good witch, Raven. Raven, how are you doing? I'm doing really good. <laughs> you sound it. Exactly what are you on? No, she had a little bit of oral surgery the other day, yesterday. I don't even know what I'm on. <laughs> they gave me a bunch of stuff. Perfect. I have to take it twice a day, and it makes me real weird. All right. Good dental health. Yes. yes. Scrub those teeth, kids. Uh, well, listen, we have a Pass guest. Pass it around. We have the guest in the... Yes, please. We've already went through that off here. But anyway, um, we have a guest in the room. A good friend, Victor Wap. Victor Wap, let's please. Hey, Come on. Vic. Good to see you. Hello, soon. guys. What a pleasure to join you again. Okay. okay, say your last name because it's Vic Mananya, right? Yeah, why is this so difficult? I don't know. I'm from Boston. <laughs> what is it? What's your, how do you say your last name? Well, if you were in the old country, yes, you would say Mignogna. 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 Okay. Yep. Uh, but but when my grandparents came over, it kind of got simplified and it became Mignogna. Manana, okay. Well, like, oh, people, it's like, like tomorrow. Spanish. Tomorrow in Spanish. Tomorrow, manana. Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, manana. Okay, right. I want right. to know how Raven is doing with her surgery. What happened? You look kind of. You look so. You Say look it. relaxed. Relaxed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I just had to get some wisdom teeth pulled, and it's been uh, just a cycle of of all these meds. So this has been a an interesting show for me. <laughs> Are you doing okay? Are you doing all right? Yeah, my face is just very swollen, but Vic otherwise cares. everything's good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Do you want Vic to drive Thank out to your asking. house and you know yeah, Vic will come drive out, off? Man. And take we care can of share you? the meds. I can bring <laughs> shit in <and> medication. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> hey, listen. So, so Vic, uh, we should um, you know uh, regular listeners know who you are, but uh, for our new listeners, you play Captain Kirk, James T. Kirk, and the uh, YouTube series Star Trek continuous yes it's not just youtube it's it's a web series of course web series. It's, yeah. on, it's on several different places at star trek continues.com right I have well over 10 million viewers yes for those, for those of your viewers who don't know the 10 second elevator pitch is it picks up where the original series was abruptly canceled and it finishes the five-year mission of the enterprise returns the ship to earth and leaves all of the characters where they were when Star Trek The Motion Picture began. Okay, you're the bridge. You're the bridge from the TV yeah, show. Perfect. We rebuilt the entire soundstage. The Not ready for all y'all yeah. to come down and visit our studio. Okay, you have a studio in, where is it? In Atlanta? Florida, Georgia? It's in Kingsland, Georgia, which is about 25 minutes from Jacksonville, Florida. You fly right in to Jacksonville, Florida, and 25 minutes up I-95 is this beautiful town called Kingsland, Georgia, we have a, a, a facility there with the entire sound stage from the original series rebuilt. Mm. And once a month, one weekend every month, we open the studio up for people to come and walk through and take pictures and nice. sit on the cap sit in the captain's chair and step up onto the transporter platform and take all the pictures they want. We've been uh, quiet for the summer months because it's way too hot yep. in Georgia. Yep. But September we're starting back up. Nice. September, October, November, December. All of y'all need to come down. You need so to. So these are the these are the original sets. These are the original sets that they used on the show, right? 
Well, it's a we rebuilt the original sets. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, obviously, all the original sets have long since been destroyed. By but, Lucy. Uh, but we, <laughs> but right. yeah, we had a we had uh, architectural plans drawn up. Yep. For the sets, so uh, what you would experience at our studio is within inches. When you see, you see. Wow, well, hang on, that's a secret phrase. Uh, wait. When you see the show, uh, Star Trek continues. You, you, you it, I got to tell you, it, it takes you like about two minutes to kind of see what's going on, and basically what it is is you are just you're doing the TV show in just such a way that. It's like, well, I'm watching another kind of Star Trek. This is this is excellent because you really stay true to what the TV show is about. Everyone is in the uniform. Everything is perfect as far as the uh, dress and the and the setting goes. But then you also have characters who appeared on the original show come back and reprieve, you know, their characters or show up again. I think that's very cool. I agree, and and I, I do want to make the point though that you know Star Trek was not about phasers and communicators and beaming down and uniforms it was about storytelling it was about human stories and ethical questions right. and moral dilemmas and that's those are the kind of stories that we felt very very strongly about those are the kind of stories we need to we need to tell right right so that's a Gene Roddenberry's influence, right? Gene Roddenberry was like the executive producer, the oh, creator absolutely. of Star Trek, and he was, a, he was one of those kind of guys, right? In the late 60s, 60s. Yes. That and I think that's one of the things that separates our series, actually, from mm -hmm. other series is that, you know, you can go to Lowe's and Home Depot and buy a bunch of lumber and paint and build sets, but that's still not Star Trek. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's the storytelling. And in order to tell those kind of stories, you need good story writers and you need good actors yes. to act those stories. And um, I really believe that's one of the reasons that Star Trek Continues is kind of a cut above most fan series. Because oh, yeah. 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 It's so authentic. The word is sure authentic. We wanted, sure, we wanted to pay attention to the lighting and sure, we wanted the props to look right and sure, we wanted the music to look right and sound right and the sets to look right. But when all that's said and done, those are just background elements. The story is the thing. Right, right. So when they were shooting the original Star Trek, the TV show, everyone was high, right, on pot? <laughs> I'm afraid I wasn't around yet, so okay, I don't know. But you know, you know. I don't know. It, it, there are rumors that that's the case, correct? Well, I have not heard those rumors. You oh, just start. You just started that rumor, dude. Wow. Okay, I'll start it right now. Hey, listen, we're talking about stuff like this. You know the show Laverne and Shirley? Sure. You know yeah. Laverne and Shirley? Right. They, well, had, a, they yeah. had to end that show because everyone was just like so high and stuff. And, and are you I, serious? I, look it up. It's, it's, it's everywhere. Everyone was just so high. They sent down the suits from, you know, ABC, NBC oh, or something. God. And they came in and they go, no wonder, you know, these things are two weeks late. Everyone is on weed. Well, and no one knows what they're doing. Was, I think it was probably Lenny and Squiggy that were bringing the drugs in. Go. Yeah. Well, who else? <laughs> I guess. But yeah, anyway. What about yes. the Malachi brothers? They look like they were probably. Wow. Mind Ragusa. Yeah. See, that's, yeah, that's, that's racist. But the it's thing is, <laughs> <laughs> in Star Trek continues. I don't you know, know you can tell you this, but Italian is not a race. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. It's a nationality. Right. Right. It's a and lifestyle. It's, it's a a lifestyle. Italian, so I'm allowed to say that. I'm, right. I'm part yeah. Italian too. It's a lifestyle. Well, and I am too. My yeah. Yeah, Catania Italian, in my family. Sicilian. Hey, can I ask you guys a quick question? Sure. Yes. Where do you guys where do y'all live? Boston. Oh my god. New Hampshire. Except, you know, Boston area is New Hampshire. Raven lives in upstate New York and Switch lives out in um Okay, uh, Battle Michigan. Creek, Michigan. Okay, well listen you guys, I'm doing a signing in a few weeks in in Connecticut. Yes. And then I'm doing a signing in in Framingham. Yeah, Framingham. Oh, Framingham. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When's and that? When's Framingham? I will tell you. Okay, here we go. Okay. Play, play a little uh, music. Where where when is that? November not that weekend. When is it? Okay. That weekend. That's Seattle. Somewhere on Route 9. Uh, November 20. November oh. 2021. Okay. And then in September, I'm going to be at the Big Apple Comic Con. Wow. 
Big Apple. Oh. <laughs> Raven is with us again. Yes. Yeah, Raven popped in. Raven. Good time to check the meds, kiddo. Good oh. time to check the meds. Wow. Raven, yeah, I is- you and your dentist there. Yeah, maybe we'll go and uh, maybe Easy we'll drive down to put her on a drink. I'd like to do that, yeah. We'll come down. We're in. Um, we'll all get on a plane and come down to the studio. Uh, uh, our studio first open house is September 11th and 12th. Mm-hmm. That sounds like a blast. I want to mm-hmm. do that. It's like stepping into a dream, you guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, and I lived in Jacksonville. I, I, I'm sorry that I missed you. Oh, yeah. I was, when I was stationed there. Oh, my gosh. Well, yeah, Kingsland is actually where Kings Bay uh, sub base is. Oh, and yeah, yeah. We have yeah. a lot of servicemen, extras in our – obviously, they make great security, red shirts and stuff. Uh, October 23rd, 24th is is the weekend in October. Nice. So it's easy. Pop on a plane down. Are you on set? I do. Are you there when people are doing the tour? I go and I give the tours. Oh, you give the tours. Oh. Cool. Do you dress up? Do you go in the? Uh, do you put on the uh, captain's uh, uniform? No, 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 no. I don't do that. Okay. But I, but I do. Um, I do go down and I give the tours because, of course, you know, I've been there since the beginning. Right. And was a you know very instrumental involved in all of it, building it and and having it all done. And so I go down and give the tours myself. And um, if you're uh, if you're your viewers and listeners are interested, go to neutralzonestudios.com. Great site. And that is the guy that, the, the, that's the, the people that, that own it and take care of it now. And you can sign up there. It's free of charge, but there's a sign-up sheet for the weekends. And they take a certain number of people every hour and a half. And I go to the studio and tell them about, oh, where did we get that? And how do we find that? And who made that? And how do we figure that out? And... That kind of stuff. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Star Trek, we've talked about this on the show before, but Star Trek has become, I mean, the word iconic doesn't really even you know, uh, describe it right. It's always going to be around. You know what I mean? It's It's been, I know that Star Trek is the most, um, uh, the most uh, involved. Uh, yeah, but also involved like in, in, in people's lives in the 20th century. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. More people knew about Star Trek, like Star Trek, like than anything else, even like the Beatles and stuff, you know? So yeah. it's always going to be around, like Beethoven's music and stuff like that. It's always going to be around, you know? Well, um, it's funny they even added Chekhov to the series because the Beatles were popular. Do you remember oh, what Chekhov was? Yeah. yeah, he was on, uh, he looked like Davy Jones. Yeah. He looked like, <laughs> yeah. Nick, Nick Hare. And that was because the Beatles were so popular. And I have to tell you one other, one other thing. Who who is that that's got the uh, Steve? Got, yes, uh, got the, that. the Invaders Foster <laughs> in, on the screen. Uh, we just finished building the view screen section of the bridge, uh, and it is breathtaking. That view screen is four feet by seven feet. Nice. And um, and I saw it looking at that picture. I'm like, yep, that's just spot on. Hmm. Yeah. In fact, I got to tell you something. Um, Raven told me off here that she was very excited that you were going to be on tonight. Really? Yeah. We're not sure if that was the drugs talking or not. <laughs> <laughs> it, did, it did happen right after the dentist visit, but. <laughs> <laughs> I always love being out with you. You're so interesting. Well, thank you. I enjoy seeing you guys. And when he, when Mac wrote me the other day and said, hey, when are you free again? I'm like, well, I'm free this Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. And here you are. Cool. Right. So you're playing softball later on tonight? I am. I had a double header this morning. Hang on. Jeez. And then I've got 945. I really don't want to go back out. Yep. But but, 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 but but why are you going? Are you in a tournament or something? Or are you just true to the team? Just, no, I just love sports. I love to play sports. And what do you play? Are you the pitcher? Are you the pitcher on the team? No. No? What do you you're play? You're shortstop. Uh, ooh. Well, back in the day... Back in the day, some shortstop, but I play left field a lot. Okay, okay. yeah. William Scott. I used to be left out too. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that, though. Look at that. Uh, all the lingo left no. out. It's the, the, the guy who can't play, they use equipment in right field. Right. If you can hit opposite direction, opposite field, yeah, make those poor suckers in right field work for days. Yeah, Vic, I know you don't like to do this, but can you just give us a little James T, please? Why do you do that? Why I don't do you, know. Why do you want to do that? Yeah, you why would you, you want, want to uh, you know Neil Young to sing a song? Well, but I'm not William Shatner. So, come on. I love Bill. What's wrong I with Neil Young? Too. We all love Bill. 
I love Bill too much. Somebody's going to report back to him. No one's going to report back. The other guy was impersonating you and making fun of you on this crazy show. show. No, yeah, this show. <laughs> no, go ahead, just give us a little bit of just a little bit. Come on, uh, Jack. You, you don't. You don't have to. Be. Says the guy with the uh, air, with the fighter pilot. Yeah. Stuff. <laughs> I wasn't. <laughs> Raven has built a shrine to you in her room. Okay, can you at least? Is it that cute little plant behind you, Raven? What is that? Oh, my, my aloe plant. Oh, is it an aloe plant? Yeah, I'm trying yeah. to. You're soothing, Vic. Oh no, that's not my aloe plant. That's my fern that's dying. Oh, you're uh -oh. a fern, Vic. <laughs> Glad you asked. No, my fern. shrine is actually in my closet. Um, oh. on a, well, I can show you a picture of it. Would you? I would be honored. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Something I'll, I'll send have. it to you later. Only if he does a little James T. How about that? No, Raven, you're on my side here. No, I don't not. choose sides. I don't <laughs> put me in that position. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. He's not. He's not going to do it. That's okay. So, so um, God, just I feel bad, you guys. Well, so do we. You know, I could do it. I mean, I. Hey, okay. Switch. Can you do James T. Care? Can you do him? It would be sacrilegious, Mac. That's right. It'll be sacrilegious, right? Then they always just he he stops in the middle of the sentence where no one else would stop before, he, right? And he tells a great one. story as to how he developed that technique. By the oh, way, oh really? Yeah. Okay. It yeah. was it was it really? was during a there was a play that was failing years ago. Yeah. And people were walking out, so he started kind of hamming it up a bit and, and and speaking in that manner to try and get people to sort of pay attention and stick yeah. around a little bit. Oh yeah. my! He's he's one of the greatest over actors that you could possibly hey, find, and he right, makes it yeah. work. He makes yeah. it work, though. I mean, it, it, it's it's phenomenal. Only he I can remember make it when work. he did the uh, the uh, Twilight Zone, where he was the doctor on the airplane oh, with, the, uh, yes. with the off and the wake. Too and much. He, so he, good. he was over the top in that, but it was so believable. It was so him that yeah. when you see that and you see him later on. Uh, the guy's incredible. I just heard him on a recent interview on the local area where he got on, and the, the people that were going to do it, rock and roll morning show kind of people, they all love Star Trek. And Vic, you need to do this show. I need to get you connected with them sometime just to do the morning show with these guys. Oh, they please. were nervous, though, about having him on board because <laughs> of, you know, that he can be tough in an interview and all this other stuff. And it was wonderful. He just, he, he came on and he just did an absolute perfect you know, you know, you know why people why people feel that way is because I mean I've spent a lot of time with him. Yes, and he's so quick witted. Yes, and he, he's he's so like his humor. He's a wise ass. He's so quick, and and sometimes people don't know how, what to do with that. They're yep. like, is he is he making fun of me? Is he is he bored? You know, is he in, is he no? He's just so charismatic. And and so quick witted yes. and so intelligent. Like he reads about everything, he studies everything. Every yeah. time I'm with him, he'd be like, Vic, have you heard about such and such? Do you know about this thing? I read about it the other day and I can't believe it. I mean, like <laughs> he was he's always talking about things that he's learning at ninety three years old. Yeah, ninety three, yeah. <laughs> Human being. He recorded that progressive rock album when he was 80 <laughs> yeah. years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. I know people who played on it. Yeah, he got a lot Classic. of big talent to play on it. He's just he his does rendition everything. of Rocket Man. I was just about to say the, the version epic. he did yeah. of Rocket Man is, is fantastic. Epic. Yeah. It's epic. You cannot. I mean, you, you don't even have to go to the dentist without, like, and listen to it after laughing. going to the dentist. It's going to be more than that. They played at the dentist's office. <laughs> <laughs> I even like him as TJ Hooker sliding across the, the car. Yeah, oh, yeah. Some fans wrote me and said, uh, have you ever thought about covering Rocket Man? Wow. Are you sure? That's a great idea. Chance in hell. Really? No. Matt. We can put that together, Vic. No, because you see... There's this very, very, very fine line between imitation being the highest form of flattery and somebody feeling like you're making fun of them. And yeah. if there is one human being on the planet that I would never want to think that I was satirizing or poking any fun at, it's Bill Shatner. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, there may be a song understand. out there for you. Right. That is the right way to go with this. There could be your version, the the continuation of talking rocket man. There's something out there. You may be right. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Do, you could do David Bowie's. Um, he did like a follow up to uh, Roger. Major Tom. Is it Ziggy Stardust? Yes, yeah. such a good song. And the Spiders from Mars. Major Tom. So, hey, hey, hey Vic, so where can people get a hold of you? Uh, well, on well, I mean, after the softball game or before the softball yeah. game. I'm just going to get the softball game tonight. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at Vic Mignana. Um, and. Uh, I've got a, you guys, can I just say I've got a lot of events lined up? Yes, let's hear them. Oh my gosh, really? Okay. Yep. Listen, li- listen to this, y'all. I mean, thank, thank God, by the way. I'm incredibly, incredibly grateful. So next weekend, I'm going to be at, a, at an event in Canada, uh, August 14, 15, that weekend. The following weekend is, is that I'm going to be signing on Saturday the 21st at Most Excellent collector shop in uh, Connecticut. Nice. And then I'm leaving and flying Saturday night across the country to Sacramento where I'm doing a signing in Sacramento at a toy show on uh, Sunday the 22nd. Mm-hmm. Then the following week, which is my birthday weekend, I'm going to be at UltraCon in West Palm Beach. West, wow, you are going across the country. Oh. Then the following weekend, I'm going to be at Arklatex, which is a convention in, in right in the corner of Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas, where they meet. William Ask. The next, no. Okay, go ahead. The next weekend, I'm going to be uh, at the studio giving tours um, for the fan presentation weekend. Yep. And the next weekend in September, uh, 17, 18, 19, um, I may be in Orange County. Uh, the following weekend is Big Apple Comic Con in New York. The following weekend, which is the first weekend in October, I'll be in uh, outside L.A. Doing wow. A... Then the following weekend, I'll be in Wisconsin. This is... Uh... The weekend, I'll be at the New Jersey Collectors Fest. That's the one to go to. Okay. Jersey, where all of the dreams come true. Yes. And then the yeah. next weekend, which is the final weekend in October, I'll be in Atlanta. Uh-huh. This is into November. I'll be at the Seattle Toy Show. First weekend in November. He's he's like uh, he's the Michael Caine of this. He's the uh, you know he takes everything. Here we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, Am I hearing this? Are the lyrics to this song? That'd yes. be funny. Are they? <laughs> Good. Now we got to get clearance from that. Okay, thanks. Very lyrics to that song. Wow. Good job. So listen, Vic, what is the website people can go on, see your schedule, see what you're up to? Well, you know what? Um, you might want to check out my, my online fan club. It's risenbullrangers.com. That's R-I-S-E-M-B-O-O-L. Risenbull. That's the little town that my character in Full Metal Alchemist came from. Okay. Risenbullrangers.com will have my schedule. And then if you follow me on Twitter, I make announcements there and post little videos letting people know where I'm going to be next and stuff. So right. I just want to spell your name for uh, people out there. So it's Vic, M-I-G-N-O-G-N-A. Exactly. Uh, you know, so just, uh, you know, Google him. Now, I'm going to ask you one more thing, okay? Two more things. First of all, can you cook Italian? Are you any good cooking Italian stuff? You know what? I make pasta really good. Okay. That's it. I don't think it qualifies as cooking that you make pasta, but you I put it in water, you boil it. Yeah, but you gotta watch it, you know. Okay, yes. Put together, you don't want to cook it too long. It yeah. to be El you make your own okay. sauce. Yeah. You make your own sauce, gravy, as they call it up here. I, I do not. I oh do not. wow, you missed the gene, huh? Okay. My favorite, my favorite pasta is angel hair. I, yeah, love, yeah, I love that. The capellini, the the very fine angel hair pasta. So my 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 last question to you is now: someone wrote to us and said that you are on this website where you will give out like you know happy birthdays to people, little video things. What is that about? <sighs> Thank you for mentioning that. I'm the worst salesperson I know. Is Not it really. Kino? Why do I always want to call it Kino? Cameo. 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 <laughs> it's the drugs, kiddo. It's the drugs. Wow. It's okay. You're doing fine. Vic, explain that for us. Here's what it looks like. Cameo is this app right here. Yeah. And you hit it, and I actually have a couple of, of requests waiting. 
seeing a picture of Raven there. What's going yeah, on like, what happened there? Okay. Yeah. So 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 you basically you do a little video saying happy birthday or uh, here's a special yeah. day or whatever. It could be, it could be anything. Yeah. It could be uh, somebody's graduation. It could be for somebody's birthday. It could be just, you know what? I get a lot of people. A wake say, up call. Uh, like here, can I read this one? I'm sure. going to give it. names. But what the person does is they say who it's to and who it's from. And this one says pep talk. Okay. Pep talk. Go. It says, could you please give a pep talk as a character that I played? Uh, where it says, even the darkest waters may be navigating through proper strategy. And a pep talk, um, armor protect, please, please make the video, blah, blah, blah. And so then, like, the next one is <laughs> somebody to somebody else, and it's birthday. Yes. And it says, can you please wish my brother a very happy birthday? We're both massive fans. And then they tell me a little bit about the brother. You met him in London a oh. few years back. Remember him? Oh, yeah. Okay, go ahead. And so so they just they give you the information and then the the app is so cool you guys cuz all you do is you just click the little the little camera button. Yep. And when you click the camera button, the uh the information, the details, the script, yeah. Yeah. Remember are superimposed over the camera. Oh nice. So it looks like you're you're talking to the camera but you've got all of the information, the guy's name, what his, his birthday is? What is the uh, what is the price for this? What do you get out of this? Other than the goodness of your hat? Um, different different actors are different. Okay, there, there are a lot of different people on uh, a lot of different celebrities, athletes, yes. all kinds of people on cameo. Okay, this, this could be a great line for Mac to fall in. Don't you think? <laughs> I do. Hey, this is Mac Maloney from Mac Maloney's Military X Files. No. Happy birthday. No, no, no. Yeah, I Not can see this going for one, one. places. I'll Raven, have Raven do it. Hey, listen, uh, hey, Vic, Vic, uh, will you do tasteful nudity on these things? No, I don't. Oh, do that. Okay, all right, no nudity. Right. I don't do it. Okay. Tasteful uh, or otherwise. Okay. okay. Vic the Wop, let's give him a round of applause, please. He has to go to a baseball game. I'm sure he'll get Drag the him out. And the ninth inning. That's Vic, <laughs> Vic Manana. Let me just spell his name again. V I C Vic. M I G O G N A. No, no, no you're you wrong. M I G N O G A. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hang on. Jeez. M I G N O G N A. Right. Manana. You nailed it. You nailed I don't know it. who had the oral surgery. Wow. Hang on. <laughs> Thank you, Vic, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Vic. Awesome. Thanks, Vic. Thanks, it was nice Vic. talking to you. You guys come see me at a show, okay? Yeah, right. we will, for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, we'll trek down. He's Thank like you, the, Vic Mignogna. He's the antipasto of the show. Here, guys. You have to cook for us. I um, feel better, Raven. Feel better. Thank She's so feeling much. great. <laughs> <laughs> Star Trek continues. Just go watch Star Trek continues. It's really a lot of it's fun. Excellent. It, it is really is very good. Is, is, if it's not the best show, it's definitely in the top five on YouTube. Yeah, good. No doubt. Good. And may I say, when you're watching it, you know, you do you do get the lighting, you do get the music that kind of pulls you in. And once in a while, you forget that there's different actors on there. Right. Yes, and absolutely. You're not yep. watching the original show because yes. it yes. feels right into like it. you are yes. yep. many times. Thank you, you fall right into it. You really do. It's very, very cool. Vic, thank you very much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon, okay? My pleasure, guys. See you soon. I hear okay, Go four for four tonight, okay? Four Thanks, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, uh, we'll take a commercial break now. We'll be right back after this. You'll listen to Mac Maloney's Military X Style Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Mac Maloney's Military Exile Show here on the Distant Thunder Radio Network. This is Mac Maloney. Wow, what a show uh, we've had for you tonight. We learned uh, that sometimes people hear sounds that come from nowhere. No one knows where they come from. Strange sounds. We found out what uh, Wilco means. Wilco. What is it again there, Coco? Will we'll comply. Will comply. Okay. You know, famous uh, kind of terms, military terms. Uh, that have uh, come into everyday life. We just talked to Vic the Wop, our good friend Vic Manana, 
who plays uh, Captain Kirk in the uh, series on uh, YouTube and other places called Star Trek Continues. They get everything authentic. He's a really good guy. Star Trek Continues. And uh, and now we're back. And um, I just want to say that uh, Switchblade, oh, I should introduce everyone. You know, the entire gang is here. JJ is here. Paul, Hello. you okay? Yep, we're good. Yep. Happy. Okay. What are you drinking there? What's that? What Dun- is that? Dunkin' Donuts coffee. coffee. Yep. Uh, don't, Keeps- don't give them a plug. Um, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> also, we'll edit that out. Uh, Pina Cobra, Co- Coco's up there. On the way in, back. In Maine. Okay. You're in your bunk. I mean, you're, uh, what do oh, you call it now? Compound. Compound. Sorry. Yep. For tax reasons. He's in uh, Switchblade Steve Ward, our national correspondent up there in Battle Creek, Michigan. Switchy. Great to be here. Okay. And also our security chief, Willie Club, is here. All soon hands to, on deck. Soon to move. Do you hear any uh, weird noises at night come from Lawrence? Yeah, all I hear is silence now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better than gunshots and sirens. Okay. Uh, and also, the beauty among the beasts, our good friend Raven. Good witch Raven is here, Raven. Hello. Okay. Okay. <laughs> good witch, good RX. That's all we need to say good tonight RX. for Raven. Still recovering Raven is somehow. spelled with an R and it extends with a little X. Oral mm-hmm. surgery. Yeah. Okay. So, anyway, so the whole gang is here. Um, and, um, off here, Switch and I have been talking about, you know, more than once, the, the whole, we talk about Mothman a lot because it's kind of like, a, you know, he's like a, um, a favorite monster, okay? And, you know, that happened down in, uh, you know, in the early 60s, I believe. Uh, people saw this very strange creature. Lots of people saw him. Uh, and he looked like, um, you know, maybe more owl-like than a Mothman, but um, he had these huge wings. And at one point he chased a car going like 80, 90 miles an hour. Um, they actually made a movie about it, The Mothman Chronicles. Is it The Mothman Chronicles, Switchy? Uh, Mothman Prophecies. Prophecies is the movie it's Richard Gere. From the book by John Keel. Right. My first paranormal book I ever read. It's a great book. John Keel is a really good researcher. Richard Gere plays in the movie. It's not a half bad movie uh, when you watch it. But anyway, um, what we've talked about before is that, um, and it sounds odd, but um, Mothman didn't use his wings. He had these like huge wings, but he didn't seem to use them. Uh, to, you know, uh, achieve flight, chase cars at 90 miles an hour, get on top of bridges and, you know, this kind of crazy stuff. And why wouldn't he flap his wings? Now, I I just got thinking about this because there's a new Marvel Universe uh, movie out coming out, and one of the characters basically has wings, but he doesn't flap them either. I uh, wrote the switch, and I said to him, didn't Hawkman in the DC Comics, he had wings, but he didn't really, you know, use his wings either. And so then I did a little bit of research, and there's a number of cases. Um, uh, one of them was called the, the Cornish Owlman, I think, in the U.K. Right. People saw same thing, just like uh, Mothman, a big creature, humanoid creature, scary-looking thing with big wings. But when he took off, he, she, what, took off to fly, it, the wings just didn't seem to be involved. It just it took off, didn't have to flap them or anything like that. He was seen by a cemetery as well, by mm-hmm. two girls. So, so. You know, I guess this. I'm going to throw this to Switch first, and then we're going to hear about his talk. But, you know, Switch, you've done a lot of Mothman research. I mean, it seems kind of odd. He'd have these big wings and these other creatures, the same thing, and they don't use them to fly. Is there any – have you ever heard any explanation for that? Well, a lot of times I, I've been on different shows because I, I am kind of known as the Mothman guy. In fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I went to the Bigfoot conference, people where well, they were introducing me as, oh, this is Steve Ward. He's the Mothman guy. Hmm. But uh, I I tell people Mothman was a paradox because uh, it looked like a physical creature. Uh, It was about seven feet tall, kind of dark colored gray, black, uh, piercing red glowing eyes. The head seemed to be kind of sunken down in the chest. You didn't really see the head separate from the body. Uh, The wingspan was about 10 feet. And biologically, it probably doesn't work to have a, a 10 foot wingspan to lift a humanoid figure of that size and people would say that they would sometimes they would see it see it put its wings behind it and then take off straight like a helicopter so it didn't even take off like a conventional bird of any size and uh uh, it did seem to uh john keel found a series of weird footprints by the old north power plant in what they call the tnt area one of the main places it was first seen uh it, so that there were some things that imply that it might be physical, but there were other things that made it seem like it was more of an apparition. 
Uh, it was seen a couple of times in conjunction with strange lights in the sky. Some people wanted to call it an alien. It, it, I, I don't know, you know if that's valid or not, but uh, it uh, we chased cars. Uh, it scared the heck out of people. There was one instance where a, uh, a prominent uh, uh, person in Point Pleasant who was uh, remained anonymous went out in his front porch and saw this thing standing in his front yard. And all of a sudden he realizes that he's missing about 10 or 15 minutes of time. He was in kind of a trance and this thing took off. So uh, I, a very, uh, people want to say, well, maybe it was interdimensional. Well, what does that mean? Does that right. mean it's, it's a physical creature that can somehow move into another realm or it is it something wings. more uh, in, in, in that we have to would, under, would have to have a, a concept of quantum physics to understand right. what it did. I'm going to, uh, uh, I, I got to say this is that, um, as you said before, the thing was seven feet tall and a 10 foot wingspan. You know, I'm going to throw this to Coco in a second, but I'm, I'm guessing aerodynamic wise, that's not enough of a wing to lift a seven foot creature. So that's that kind of adds to the mystery. The um, one of the stories that I came upon was this uh, 1961, a guy is flying his private plane over the Hudson River, as it turns out. And he said that he saw a, 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 a some kind of a winged creature. Uh, he says it was it was as big as a fighter plane, uh, did not flap its wings, but, you know, kind of flew, you know, circles around them, whether he had no idea what this thing was. So this, the, the whole idea of not flapping your wings yet having these wings, um, you know, there are these guys who jump off the Swiss Alps and they'll have they'll have a jetpack on them and and they have wings to kind of stabilize them, you know, to kind of keep them in the air like an airplane does. The airplane doesn't have to, you know flap its wings so i'm wondering if that is going on switch you know what i mean and then i'll ask coco uh it's you know there, there's so many so many variations on this as a i think it's from uh 1948 that they, they spotted something like a elongated craft or structure or whatever but it it flapped its wings <laughs> like wow. a metallic craft flapping its wings so you get the, the reverse of, of the whole thing it's uh, uh, uh dr donald omond who was uh, someone that actually uh, uh, attempted to exercise the Loch Ness monster? He called all of this part of the Phantom Menagerie, and that's mm. I think is a good name for it. Yep, yep, sure. All right, Coco, I'm going to ask you now. Let me just start with this question. So, if the if the creature is seven feet tall and he has a ten foot wingspan, that doesn't sound like enough uh, flapping power to get him off. But whoop, get him off. But if he was had some kind of other propulsion, that would be the kind of wing that you would want to be like the wing of an airplane. Yeah, no. Yeah, uh, you, you raise an excellent point, Mac. You know, the, the thing that you wrote uh, and spoke about earlier where they don't seem to be moving, if you look at a hummingbird, the wing on a hummingbird is extremely small. The wing on a dragonfly, extremely yep. small. So they move at a very, very high rate to produce the effect. So do we have that happening here? Do we have what we're, our eye is able to capture or what people are able to capture when they look at it? It looks like it stopped or it's very slow moving, but it's moving very fast. Mm. Never hear any kind of a sound associated with uh, the wingman, uh, the uh, mothman's wing right. movement. So um, then you have all kinds of, uh, is this, as uh, Switch talked about, interdimensional? Is this a spiritual creature? Is it got the uh, magic powers of angels, demons that are seen flying? Uh, it, it from the physics of it, it seems that the description doesn't match what is necessary to, uh, to achieve flight as we understand it. Right. So it's obviously something different working on. But I will throw this out. Uh, in the last uh, three months, uh, 90 or so days around Los Angeles, yep. a Mothman-like thing has been seen by a number of airline pilots flying in and out of LAX. Yeah, it was on the news last night. And they're talking that it might be a drone. Um, it may be a, a person in a kind of a jet pack or what we kind of uh, classically have thrown into the jet pack where they have a really condensed. You, if you remember that system that I was working on years back, yes. Mac, it had a very condensed series of stacked uh, rotor uh, prop rotors inside it, inside the canister. And, you know, you could it, you wouldn't have seen anything moving around. Um that was a fairly big apparatus. Mothman doesn't seem to have that, but I did throw that out. And uh, maybe there, there, those areas cover some kind of uh, realm of it. But aerodynamically, it sure seems like it's a challenge. It definitely puts it more into a, uh, a mystical kind of right. art going on here to me. 
Hey, yeah. Switch, can, can I ask a question yeah. about, you know, as you know, I'm a big Mothman fan. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of concerned of late because you always talk of Mothman in the past tense. Now, I don't know, does that mean he's, do you think he's gone to the great beyond? Uh, is he on sabbatical? Uh, but it seems like we haven't really seen any evidence of Mothman for many, many uh, years. So, uh what do you know? Do you have anything that... Well, there, there, there were a few sightings uh, after that sort of peak. Uh, the Chicago Mothman stuff, I think, is uh, is nonsense. Uh, there's a, a great researcher named Allison Jornlin that went and uh, investigated a lot of those uh, claimed reports. And uh, What was that? What was that? Someone saw, someone saw Mothman in Chicago? Yeah, well, yeah, there, there's been yeah. over the past several years, there have been reports coming in. Uh, but several of them, it turned out initially were from the same IP address that went to MUFON, the Mutual oh, UFO Network. Okay. But Muffins. a lot of them, there's, there's a lot of reasons that uh, this this lady has done phenomenal uh, research on it. Uh, there's really, a, a lot of people will, will see these winged creatures and they'll dub it the Mothman, when there's really only one uh, entity or, or, or whatever you want to call it. Oh, maybe we lost yep. him there. We lost him. Whatever you want to call it, he is saying. Here he goes. Oh, okay. Yep, go. Okay, my 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 uh, mute yeah, is working properly. Okay, uh, uh, back in uh, 1963, almost three years to the day that the Scarberries and the Mallets had the Mothman chase them from the TNT area. That was uh, November 15th, uh, 1966. Well, November 63 in Kent, England, uh, a group of uh, uh, kids coming back from a dance, uh, they saw this strange light. It seemed to land behind some trees. And shortly thereafter, this thing shuffled out, moved kind of the same way that the Mothman did on when it was walking, kind of shuffling. Yeah. It had uh, it had it was it had very much the same description, except it did not have the red glowing eyes. Mm -hmm. And that states the only time I've ever heard of a winged creature. And there's many, many reports of these things that very much resembled what they saw in Point Pleasant three years later. Mm -hmm. um, it's right. interesting. Uh, 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 Paul Devereaux dubbed these, some of these things uh, proto entities. Whenever you see a light, a lot of times you'll see a light and it actually will morph into an entity. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't actually see that in Kent, but it was pretty close. The light comes down. It doesn't really look like a craft. And the suggestion is that perhaps it, it morphed into this uh, Mothman like creature. There's another right. winged creature in, from 1903 in Van Meter, Iowa. Uh, it was a little more of a pterodactyl kind of a thing, but it had strange properties. It had kind of a light that shone on a horn on its beak, uh, although it acted very much like a bird in some cases. One person claimed they saw it on top of a telephone pole, and the way it climbed down was using its beak the same way like a parrot does in its wow. cage when it climbs down. But it also, and this is, you know, you can, you can insert your joke here, it actually at times exuded some kind of a vapor, insert your joke, but the, the witness lost time. So he uh, either went into a trance or lost time or whatever. So here you have an entity that has a, a glowing light associated with it and missing time. You also have a humanoid reports where there's a, some kind of a glowing light or they're holding it or it's on their chest or whatever. And of course, we know the missing time cases with uh, UFO abductions. Right. And it might suggest uh, uh, some people uh, are suggesting that, like Keel did, the appearance is not important. It's the cosmic mechanism behind these things because they can appear as all kinds of different creatures or whatever, but it's perhaps the same source that's right. projecting it somehow. I mean, when we look at it, when we look at it is, is like when I think of Bigfoot, for instance, okay? I mean, one explanation is that there's this different race of creatures lives up in the Pacific Northwest, even though some people have seen them in the Himalayas, and they manage to stay away from the human race they manage to survive and so on. You know, people see them, but they, you know, no one's ever found like a dead body of one or, you know, a cave where they live or whatever. And then you have things like Mothman and, and just different things that people see. It, 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 you know, there's no chance that Mothman is like living away from, you know, civilization somewhere. He had to come from somewhere else. And all these other places, all these other creatures we're talking about, you know, they have to come from somewhere else. And and that somewhere else, I mean, you know, this is you know our our time, our age, but it just seems like that somewhere else has to be. It's not another planet. It has to be, you know, some kind of different reality that touches up against ours every once in a while, or, or something. Do you know what I mean? They 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 all can't be creatures of the earth, and we just don't see them. They hide very well. 
and they just it, it's so often they don't make sense physically and you know people will say well you know with with bigfoot you don't find a body you don't find you know often find bodies of bears or whatever but you do find them sometimes you never find the body of a bigfoot and, and certain researchers like uh ron moorhead who captured the sierra sounds uh tom powell these are people that started out believing that they were some kind of an undocumented creature but after you know they're, they're the kind of researchers that listen to the reports listen to what people say and experience and tom powell has said i know i've mentioned this before that when he when he encounters people that have had seen a bigfoot but had some really high strangeness associated with it strange lights or maybe the bigfoot seemed to vanish or whatever before their eyes they're so relieved to find out that other witnesses have experienced the same high strangeness yes. because then they know they're not crazy, crazy. people are terrified I mean, it's bad enough to to say oh, i saw a bigfoot but then if you have the the high strangeness aspects associated with it then it becomes even more difficult to right. talk about hey raven if you saw a bigfoot what would you do would you run away? Would you try to engage him? I feel like I would just, I don't even know. I feel like I'm just f- right there. Yeah, there you I go. I mean, right. yeah, what do you do? Raven. Calls. Okay, Club, I'm going to ask the same thing to you. What would I do? Right. Would you try to take, I'd try to take a picture of him. Well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that he's yeah, probably. Yeah, with the flip phone, that would really happen fast. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he That's has a good point. Yeah. No, but he's, he's really not something right. that you'd want to get too close to. And so I'd probably want to get maybe some mothballs uh, to have them handy because it's probably his kryptonite, kryptonite don't you think? <laughs> mothballs, mothman. Why yeah, mothballs? Yeah. Hmm. Hey, listen, we have a few minutes left. Thank you, Switch. And, and Switch, you went and you spoke at a Bigfoot conference, but people knew you as the mothman guy, right? Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they had they divided it. They had the uh, the what you might call the regular flesh and blood Bigfoot researchers okay. uh, in one room. And in the smaller room, they called the woo room that I call the redheaded stepchild room. Oh. Uh, we had the weird people. That would, Inappropriate. Uh, talking about the high strangeness. Yes. Okay. Aspects. So and you were mobbed. You were mobbed. By I was, your well, I was I was speaking opposite Adam Davies. Adam oh. Davies is a big name. He's been on TV, uh, written books and everybody knows about him. So I I told Adam, I confess, I said, Adam, I've been telling people that you robbed uh, money from an orphanage to make more people come to my talk than yours. Yes. Yes. But they didn't, it just didn't work. They just didn't, didn't work that it. way. Okay. All right. I just realized that the graphic behind you, I thought it was for some reason uh, it looked like uh, a pea pod, but it's actually the. That's of- that's that's Frank Frazetta. That's his. Uh, he actually, I think, first uh, did that cover for a High Times uh, magazine. Oh, that right. Interviewed John Keel. Actually, a pretty good interview. But that later on became the cover of the 1991 uh, edition of the Mothman Prophecies. Yeah, nice. With the, nice. with the, which was trade paper size, very. Uh, uh, you know, very, very uh, uh, stylized, like the Mouthman statue is really? in uh, in Point Pleasant. Right, the and, one you uh, sent us a picture of his ass. Yeah, thank you. Right. <laughs> well, if, yeah, buns of steel. Abs or his ass? <laughs> He's got good abs. His ass, as it turns out. <laughs> but hey, Wani, how much time do we have left? Uh, we got uh, seven minutes. Actually, okay, so I have to do this. Thank you, switch for that. But I have to reference last week's show, and we did the uh, Club and Raven did a segment on Marian apparitions. Got a lot of people interested in these things. And I went on YouTube. So basically what they are is people, they can't, they don't claim to see the Blessed Virgin Mary. They see her because in some cases, hundreds and thousands of people have seen these apparitions where it's the mother of Jesus Christ. She appears mostly sometimes to children, gives them bits of wisdom, but comes back on a regular schedule, on a regular schedule. Um, you know, the, the one in Fatima came at the same time, you know, every, every uh, month for almost a year, um, roughly speaking. So I went on YouTube and Raven had talked about this apparition at a church in Egypt and the YouTubes, uh, they're just, I don't know why this isn't the number one news story. They're not faked. It's 1981. It's not a light show or anything. Mm-hmm. Those are really strange. The, aren't they? The videos are very interesting. Yeah, and and yeah. and it was, it was an interfaith thing. Of Christians and Jews and Muslims, everyone. Yeah, and it was over stuff. like a couple of years too, and yeah. all these people were seeing them. It was it was crazy. She's like, yeah. "Hi, here's my little bits," and then she like hung out and then left. Yep. Yeah. 
Yep. She, she, you know, she'd move around. People would get, it got really close to her, you know, so much so that, you know, they said that she was looking down at them and smiling and, you know, waving or whatever, but uh, very strange. So thanks for that report, you two guys, guy and girl. I, I had fun doing that. I don't know about you, Club. I thought that was, that was a good time. I always enjoy uh, l- looking into those kind of uh, things. I find right. it very interesting. I mean, it is interesting because it, it it's something that follows the, you know, the Catholic faith right down the middle. I mean, this is something that belongs to the Catholic faith. You know, but a lot of the pilgrims, Mac, are, are all different religions. Yeah, I think different religions. That's Yeah, that's what's weird. It attracts, yeah. you know, people from different religions. Across so, all so denominations. People want to believe. Yeah. They want to believe. Right, right. They want to believe, but they also have videos of this. So this this actually happens, you know, and, and it's like, wow, what is going on here? Maybe there's a universe that everyone is a religious figure. Want to go to that one? Maybe it's heaven. There yeah. you go. That's the next book. Let's do a Broadway play in that. Um, okay. Also, someone mentioned one one's upcoming Broadway play, a, a pocket full of wet ones. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, okay. We all need the wet ones. I think that needs to be updated. A pocket full of wet ones and a squeegee in my hand or something. Yeah. Now the, the squeegee first. has to be incorporated. It could be point. the uh, it could be the legacy to springtime for Hitler. Right, exactly. Yes. The first two lines are the opening song of the overture. Okay. <laughs> With a squeegee in my hand. <laughs> so, anyway, well, uh, that was it. thanks for that uh, report on the Marian apparitions. That was good. Thank you for everyone. Are we are we coming close to Imani or should I do a song and dance? Hey, Mac, uh, I'd just like to make a quick note, if we could, that uh, we are very close to the 231st anniversary of the United States Coast Guard. Oh, uh, yeah. We're taping the show very closely. Well, happy Coast Guard Day. To all our Coast Guard uh, listeners, two minutes. And, uh, yeah, please two minutes let everyone know by email that listens to the show that Popeye is a Coast Guard. I was just okay. going to bring that up. Who's the most famous Coast Guardman? Is uh, Popeye. We did an entire show on what service branch of the service Popeye served in. Well, Arnold Arnold Palmer is a pretty famous Coast Guardsman as well. Really? Yeah. Okay. Sure. All right. My father-in-law was Coast Guard during World Very War famous II. man. Uh, uh, Club father-in-law. Uh, that was a long name tag, but uh, it, club father-in-law is, is an English name. <laughs> I know the guy who was the um, commander of uh, Governor's Island in New York City, New York City Harbor. There's an island out in the middle of New York City Harbor that it, it was a military base. Now it's been privatized, but it had right. a golf course and everything. The place was unbelievable. So he told me that when he started off, when he was a cadet, what they did was, um, and this swore me off the ghost cat forever, not that I'd ever go in it, but they brought them out to sea in a storm in a, in a ship that only had one screw, which, uh, you know, I believe if you have two screws, you have better maneuverability or whatever. Yes. Bring them down to the back and they would like lower this. It must have been some kind of, a you know, loading craft and they would lower the back ramp. So you were basically right there in the, in the storm. And they basically made these guys stand there and get used to it or something. And he says it was brutal. But, you know, after that, he figures, well, I've, I've been in worse, so... Do you so think the they ship, still do? Am I thinking of this too literally? The ship was made with one screw, like yep. one screw held everything together. You yes. know, you guys are laughing, so I'm obviously wrong. <laughs> A lot of people have only one screw. So. Wait, 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 to wait. as the belly button of the ship. How much, how much time yeah. we have left? Yeah, one the expression. Oh, oh. He's, got a screw, all that out. he's got a screw loose. No, no, that's, that that's gold, throw. kid. That's gold. <laughs> and when I tell Mrs. Cobra that, Mrs. Cobra drove those ships. Oh, really? Uh, <laughs> he's going to explain to you about what, what one screw is. I can um, listen. I got to tell you this. You have to be confused with the turn of the screw. You know what I mean? I want to get my wisdom teeth out. <laughs> seems like a lot of fun. So, Wani, give me the go get screwed. Yeah, I, You're I screwed. Did. I got that tattoo. <laughs> is it time for the plugs there, brother? Yeah, it Wet is. Zoo. It is. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Uh, to the so many uses of the word Home screw. Homestrat Troops. Homestrat Troops. Homestrat Troops. Please dot Google org. them. Um, online. Homestrat Troops dot com. Dot, they are no, a military it's .org, charity. That's, .org. It's a nonprofit. It's .org. Okay. They, oh, right. Okay. Yep. I'm sorry. It's and right. um, Homes for Our Troops, they build homes for um, wounded Iraqi and Afghani um, veterans, um, soldiers who have lost a limb, perhaps. And they build these houses so it's easier for them to get around in wider stairways, easier stairways to get up and down, uh, lower uh, counter space in the kitchen, 
things like that, things that make it just a little bit easier for these guys to get around, guys and girls. And then once they're built, they give them, uh, they tear up the mortgage, they give them the keys, they don't have to pay anything, they deserve it. So please go to Homes for Our Troops and uh, throw them a couple bucks, 88 cents of your dollar goes towards our veterans. And uh, that's a very high rate in the charity biz. Homes for Our Troops. Definitely worth it. Please look them up. Yeah. Also. Good people. They're definitely worth it. And they're nice people. Yep. And um, also our good friend, Ron Schaub, and his mad Englishman uh, friends are putting back together a warplane from World War II, the Mosquito, made of wood mostly uh, because the British were running out of steel at the time. And they put two Rolls Royce engines on it and it turned out to be the fastest thing in the war for about two and a half years. Some of them did not carry machine guns because... Because the Mosquito could outrun the bullets. They could outrun the bullets. Yep. Uh, Day, 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 you're stepping on their minds, okay? <laughs> and uh, some of them didn't carry machine guns because they outran the bullets. They were so okay. fast, they outran the bullets. I've got a pregnant pause. <laughs> that was twins or triplets. Okay. So um, that's the People's Mosquito Project. Look them up, and uh, they're going to be giving rides soon when this you thing bet. is airborne, and one one has volunteered. I volunteered to be to the work. first civilian to yep. take off. Without a parachute. I'll have my mos net mosquito boats, goggles okay? on and my mosquito scarf. And I'm going to be tapping the, right. the pilot on the shoulder. When are we going to land this thing? So, I'm going to have a blast. Uh, two weeks ago, you said you were going to jump out naked. I am Do you gonna, remember that? I'm going to jump out naked maybe if we're low enough. Because I won't have a parachute. <laughs> That's the thing. Right. There's, not, there's, no room, there's no room in there for a parachute. Right. Am I right? Well, the story continues. So uh, thank you. Uh, so that's uh, People's Mosquito Project and also Home Stretch. Uh, thank you for everyone listening in. Let me um, say goodbye to the panel, okay? Club, I'm going to start with you, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks for joining us. You get your Patriots shirt on. Everything's good. I do. Yeah, okay. it's football season now. Looking forward to it or what? What's going to happen? Are you going to watch Tampa Bay? Tell the truth. I'm, I'm going to watch both. Both of them? You know that they're playing um, the at the same time? The fourth game of the season. Of I, it, yeah. At what home. Is, What's going to be that? That's going to be nuts. That's going oh, to be oh, bigger I, than a I Super wish Bowl. I could get a ticket, but uh, they're yeah. not available. Yeah, it's better to watch on TV. Switchy. Thank you, Switch, for putting up the train wreck image. We know that we're at the end of the show. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank Mr. Good Randy. Mr. Randy, you're here, systems manager. Everything was looking good today, kind of. All right, you're going to get some decon to get rid of those rats. <laughs> uh, I'm getting kind of, you know, attached to them, really. Really? Okay. But okay. yeah. well, that dog, that dog's going to be jealous. The dog that has, you know, become your best buddy, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we okay. are, we're kind of attached to the hip. Okay. There's a movie. Coco. Coco, thank you for joining us. All the middle-aged and up women will be uh, glad you did. Yep. Okay. As always, Mac, it is a privilege to fly on the wing. And you know, did you know that your uh, your pet Teddy the Ballas Husk got a couple shout outs in the past? Yes, weeks? yes. In fact, I supplied some pictures of him and Bears or uh, fans. Those are cleared for uh, for distribution, publication, and distribution. Okay. Anyone wants a picture of uh, Coco's Ballas Husk? Send me an email. Okay. <laughs> um, Teddy okay. doesn't like that expression "balls to the wall." By the way, I don't know. But, uh, no, I wonder why. Or nuts to butts. Saving the best for last. Raven, thank you for joining us tonight in your condition, in your state. Thank you so much for having me. I okay. forgot to tell you guys, I burned my leg on macaroni and cheese earlier today. It Hang on. Wow. I thought that was just a fun little story I, I should have mentioned. What, you spilled you it your what? leg? Your leg? Yes. Is that what you said? Yeah. 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 How did that yeah. happen? Please tell us. I, I missed my mouth. <laughs> the mac and cheese <laughs> went all over my leg, and it was so hot. Oh, I get that. Your, wow. Your mouth yeah. was so numb, you didn't even know where it was. This is yep. macar this is macaroni. Well, you know what I say to that Raven, just bite the bullet, kid. Just bite the bullet. Bite the bullet. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Did you get into FUBA? We did FUBA. Yeah, we did no, FUBA. Did you, did you yeah? Okay. All right. Uh, I was off air at that time. All right. Thank oh, yeah, you, Raven, yeah. for joining us. And thank uh, you, you will talk to you very soon. Juan Juan, uh yeah. my compadre. Okay, thank you for uh, joining us. Glad to be here at the controls. Okay. My Robin. Would you say that you're my Robin? I guess. I, I'll go with that, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Anything uh, that involves tights, he's there, man. I've been it, trying it, to say I'm <laughs> wondering to say this forever, but are you my Caucasian? Are you my Caucasian, one one? I, I, I've been... <laughs> I guess I'm okay. Caucasian. I think I'm more... Yeah. I, since I'm Italian... 
Think about it that, for a that, second. It, since I'm <laughs> okay. Italian, that makes me. Crazy, He's your metrosexual. Right? That's yeah. what no, okay. I got a little, All right, so I listen, a little more everybody listening, if you're still listening, thank you very much for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And until you uh, hear us next time, this is Mac from the entire gang saying, be safe, be happy, and, and bye-bye.